Yo, what is going on, people? Welcome to Throw Down Your Questions, episode 438. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. It's been a while. How long has it been? <laughs> a couple hours, Five man. Five days? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> we got Carlos Romero in the house. Yo, yo, yo. Brett Murdoch. What's up, people? Right. For throwing your questions, people, we don't usually get special guests, but we got a special guest tonight, man, joining us once again, Mr. Reggie Butler, a.k.a. Weapon X. What's up? Long time. Glad to be back in the building. Yeah, man. Now, I know you don't like I know you don't like people calling you that name anymore, man, but to me, you're always the Weapon X, man, with the freshest scoop just for you, you know? Man, you gotta play the song. No, not that one. I'm your uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, we, we, Yeah, we gotta play the old we gotta play the old intro of the war zone, you know? Yeah. Weapon X is an inside man. scoop just for you. Yo, Reggie, how you been, bro? I've been good, man. Um uh, just enjoying life. Um enjoying these video games. So, you know, it's all good, man. Yeah. By the way, I'm I'm asking Reggie as if I don't talk to him literally every <laughs> single day. <laughs> like we always talk, man. Yo, Reggie, yeah. he's like the best storyteller ever, man. The stories this man comes <laughs> up with, you crazy, man. Like I live like a crazy life according to this man, you know? <laughs> Go to the bodega getting them bo- <laughs> Cambodians and shit. <laughs> and and the L and the L train. Yeah, the L train, man. <laughs> That shit is funny, man. But yeah, man, um, yeah. we are here, and I want to give a shout out to all the fans. Uh, you listen to the directions. I said, ask us questions about the Xbox Showcase and Summer Game Fest. We didn't really get any Summer Game Fest questions, um, guess, you know, because that show was kind of whack. Uh, but we're here to talk about um, the Xbox Game Showcase, man. Um, so I actually consolidated a bunch of your questions into this first one because all you guys asked a variation of this question. So let's get into it, man. First question here from a bunch of you guys. Will Starfield live up to the hype? Uh, Obviously, that's the main game everyone's talking about. It had its own dedicated section at the showcase. And, you know, this anecdotal, but based off uh, what I'm seeing on Twitter, motherfuckers is hype. You know, there, there's a little bit of controversy going on as well, but that seems to be kind of drowned out by the overwhelmingly positive response. Um, so let, let's get into it. Um, Brett, you're Mr. Starfield. So uh, what do you think of what we saw today? I mean, I, I, I'm a hundred percent on the hype train. Um, I, I'm not like foaming at the mouth. Like, man, I just, I wish I could get as excited as hip hop does about some stuff. And I mean that <laughs> in the most literal said, like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, man, looks fucking cool. I'm excited. Um, everything about it. Like I, I knew all the bits and pieces. I think that I had seen, like there wasn't anything I, in particular where I was like, Oh, I did not know that. Like, except I don't, I don't think I knew that I, that you could uh, board and attack people. Like I did, like, oh my god, the ability for space piracy, like, that's that's the shit I want. I want to be able to, like, disable people's engines, board them, murder them, and take their goddamn ship, and I am excited about that being able to happen. Um, but it, all in all, man, it was just, it was really cool just kind of seeing it all laid out together. It it looks like a lot of polish went into it. Uh, the gun plays look excellent. Um, it, it's looking quite a bit smoother than it did. Um... Yeah, man. Like I'm, I'm jazzed. Yeah. So, do you think it is going to live up to the hype? Because remember, we talked about this before. It's like this game has like maybe unfair, um, like scrutiny on it. You know, um, do you think it'll actually live up to the hype? I mean, it depends. Like, there's so many ways to take that. One of the ways I, I one of the things I want to say is like Bethesda games. Like, ever since Morrowind hit, because Morrowind hit like a fucking like lightning in a bottle, man. Like. That that put them on the board, and then they followed that up with Fallout, and ever since then, anything that's come out, they've kind of had this magnifying gla- glass on them. It, it's it's not the first time where they've been like new, you know, first uh, mainline Bethesda game coming through, and people were like, "Oh, I'm getting fucking hyped." I remember how people were hyped for for Fallout, and I think that some people will get overhyped. Some people expect literally everything, um, and indeed. There, there's no pleasing everybody, but I think for the most part, yeah, like this is 
this is them leaning into what they do. This is them saying, um, we're going to take this formula and we're going to apply a new, a new uh, setting to it. So I, I don't think that they're, they're really swinging that hard. I mean, they're definitely being ambitious, but that's one of, that's more of one of those, like, does it function or does it just break down? And, you know, maybe it'll be buggy as fuck, but it's, it's an ambitious game. And if it, if it functions, then they didn't really have to reinvent the formula. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's kind of like you didn't need to turn Dark Souls into Elden Ring. I'm glad that you did. I'm glad that you did. But the game would have been successful anyway because people would have been like, "Yeah, this this is a Dark Souls. This is." It's very clear what to expect. I think here is the thing here, right? And and they only have room to improve because like Fallout gun controls, nothing to write home about, right? That's again, that's that that's not what the game's about. It if you're going in for solid gunplay and weighty controls, and cinematic explosions, and set pieces, and, and stuff like that, like, nah, man, that's not, that, 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 that's not what this game is, right? Not every NPC or even companion is going to be perfectly packed. Weird shit's going to kind of happen because it's an open world. I think a lot of people understand that at this point. But for the people that are, you know, they, they want this to be basically a Sony first party narrative exclusive that they want that the people that want this to kind of be the last of us, then you're looking at the wrong game, man. By the way, I do want to make a huge shout out. Someone that has been missing for years. It feels like years, at least the throwdown crickets made a comeback. I don't know if anybody. Hey, hey. Oh shit. That. They're back, baby. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Carlos, since you're talking, would you think of a Starfield? <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, you guys know that I've been anticipating this game since it's been announced. Uh, I was thoroughly disappointed it was delayed because that was pretty much the only thing. Well, that well, that and God of War were the only two things that I was looking forward to the second half of last year. So we didn't get that. And all I'm thinking is I just whenever this game releases, it releases because, you know, delays always happen and stuff. But I, I'm feel I feel comfortable that this game is going to come out this year and when they announced it, they've 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 released all these controllers and everything, the special editions. This presentation made me think, made me reminded me of of how much I was hyped at the beginning, because there was always a, a low point where it kind of died down a little bit, and uh, yeah, I'm you know, I'm not as as infamous as Brett of being a, <laughs> a big uh, Bethesda fan. Um, but you know, I played, uh, I played most of the Elder Scrolls, uh, games and I, I've loved most of them. Uh, I've not all of them, uh, Skyrim fallout, not a huge fallout 76 fan. Cause I did play it. So can't say that, but you know, as far as mainline Bethesda games, I'm always there. And this game, you know, I'm going to be there day one, going to be playing it on PC. Cause you, Tony mentioned you the know? controversy 30 frames per second. Uh, is not a is not a game cha- changer for me. But if I if, if I have means to uh, play it somewhere else where it could uh, play better, then I'll do it. I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do with PC. Um, yeah, man, it's a day one for me. I, I'm hyped. I'm surprised Brett was uh, during the live stream. I'm surprised Brett was uh, surprised by the, uh, the the building mechanics. The what is it? The settlement uh, building mechanics. Yeah. Oh, I knew I knew that there was settlement. Well, I knew that you could build. Your ship, but I thought that was hey. I thought that was replacing settlement building, right? Yeah. Um. So, Carlos, yeah, do you think it could live up to the hype? Oh yeah, the original question. Um. Oh man, that's a, that's a difficult one because it, it, if if you're talking about this is the, the here's the thing, Starfield is now going to be more uh. What is it? Not problematic. Uh. Uh, polarized yeah. because it's an exclusive game. Yes, exactly. Scrutinized because it's an exclusive game. It's it's a it's a Windows slash Microsoft exclusive at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, in there comes a lot of more people that whenever they see something like thirty frames per second, they're going to be a lot more vocal about it. If as if it you know, as opposed to if it wasn't uh, an exclusive title. Um, 
So I don't know, in terms of expectations, there's going to be people that are going to have expectations uh, that are going to be beyond just, is this game good or playable? Um, I feel like for me, for Brett, for anyone in this show that plays this game, I feel like the expectations are going to be met just because, and, and you know, we've always said this with caution, uh, studios with track records, you know, we talked about Cyberpunk and uh, CD Projekt Red, but um, I will say uh, Bethesda has a pretty good track record. I'm expecting this game to be at least decent. So, yeah, I will say yes. All right. Um, Chris Seeley in the house. What's up, man? Hey, Hello. how's it going? Sorry, having some what? Discord issues over here. No boy. Um, I'm, I'm curious to hear Chris's thoughts because he, he he didn't uh, get a chance to join us earlier this afternoon. Yeah, Chris, what do you think of Starfield, man? Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, what I think about that is really irrelevant. Like, they have to deliver a, a, a complete, solid experience that at least measures up to. Um, what they've put out, like with Elder Scrolls and stuff, like you. But people expect more because it's outer space, right? So everybody gets it in their head. It's like, what, what do you immediately go to? Space exploration, aliens, um, you know, uh, colonization, whatever. All these things. So if what you temper that with, you know, just uh, information but at, at at the very least you have to measure up to like a fallout or whatever and if you don't then you're gonna have problems so they have a lot to live up to and um like I, i've been i've been really busy all day so i haven't seen it but i'm just thinking my thoughts were when i saw the question was like what we can speculate all we want we could say like oh we'll live up to hype yes no I hate Xbox. I love it. Whatever. It doesn't. That doesn't matter. When they deliver it, you know, that's what's going to matter. This ain't Redfall, right? Nobody gave a shit about that, and it just bombed, right? Yeah. But it was it was not good from the jump. The idea wasn't good, whatever. But this isn't Redfall, right? People have mm -hmm. expectations. Starfield's been hyped up for years, not months, years, and you know they put out that um, a CG trailer like a couple of years ago. The one with the sand land. <laughs> and, and and so yeah you, you so you're expecting like this epic experience like planet landing you're almost like you have visions of like elite dangerous or something just to evoke brian in here you know it's, it's you see you, you start thinking like oh they could they pull that off right you know so if they don't and it's like leak well especially if it's broken like don't, I, well, let's not get started on that let's not go to the launch of fallout 76 or anything don't do yeah. that but if they can nail like most of those expectations and then temper the extra stuff, like, hey guys, we don't have like a, a fifty billion star universe or anything, settle down. You could go here and these systems and whatnot and do this and so th then I think they'll be fine. I think that that will do well for them. Can I can I right. bring, can I mention something real quick? Just piggybacking off of Chris's point and 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 Brett's point, uh if if people are playing this game and they're expecting Mass Effect. I think they'll be thoroughly disappointed. Yeah, because it def I, doesn't even feel like Mass Effect, you know? Yeah, because there, there, there are some people that the expectation is uh, space uh, space game, you know, Mass Effect. And yeah. Bethesda doesn't have the track record of having that type of narrative type game that Mass Effect provided uh, back in the day. So I feel like if people are expecting a Mass Effect game, they'll be disappointed. If they're expecting a Star Citizen game, I don't know what to say to you because I've never played Star Citizen. Um, it's part of you know, it's part of a cult at this point. I don't know, I don't know who plays that, but I know people do. Um, so yeah, the, those expectations I don't think they'll be matched if they they're comparing to like Mass Effect because I've seen that comparison a lot of times mm -hmm. online. I just want yeah, to make that's make sure people, people going off. Um, Reggie, what do you think? I st definitely got to hear your interest. Is you're not really an Xbox guy or Bethesda guy or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so, as you know, my rule of thumb is, um, I don't really get hype or it have any, I set my, 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 exp my expectations low, so I try to keep them in check, right? But looking at Starfield, um, I guess I'm of two minds about it. Uh, I am a little bummed about the, uh, 60 FPS not being an option. Um, I think that 
you know, um, if you if you buying a console and you say that this box can do this, right? Then at least let me get the option um, to do that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. You know, so that's that, right? Um, I mean, it's Bethesda, or as I call them, Bug Thesda, until they yeah. prove otherwise, right? <clears throat> but I think that um, there was some aspects of the, of the of the game that I like, but visual the, the world look look you know pretty intriguing but graphically i'm not a big fan um of the the style of the, the way in which it looks um yeah. i do think they need to update that engine or get a new engine because i think i forgot what the name of the, the name of the engine that they use but they really need to like this might upset some people. I think they need to throw it in the trash and go get something else. Because, <laughs> yeah, because, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> hey, I mean, because some of the animations look like really jarring to me. Like with some of the the, uh, the interactions with the characters, like that you speak to in the game, they yeah. just look like all kind of. It didn't look as smooth, right? And I, I don't want to bring bring you know certain games up, but if you look at something like, um, I guess we can't even really compare the two games, but if you look at. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, right? And you look at the the animations in that game when they talk like it's sometimes you get like different frames, and they, and they put their whole body into it, right? It's not just okay, I'm a talking head and I'm talking, and then you know the animators they're gonna move the hands or whatever, like I'm a puppet. I feel like we're at a time where you know if if I'm in this world and I need to believe that you know I'm in here, I'm investing my time in this world. You know, I need to believe that you're real, right? This is just things I didn't pick about. Um, I mean, that being said, I don't have an Xbox. Uh, I may actually buy one. I didn't really. I thought someone was going to make me go out there and buy one today, but I was like, nah, I'll just no. wait for Starfield to come out and go get it, go get one, I guess. But I'll give it. I mean, I'll try it. I mean, it's going to be on Game Pass. So, I mean, um, not that that's a bad thing, but um I mean, hey, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of, I kind of feel like Brett. My enthusiasm is kind of like him, not like, like overwhelmingly like him, but I can see, I can see what what they're trying to do and the and, and the the big gamble they're trying to take. So, I mean, it is something kind of different, you know, pretty different. We haven't really seen that before, you know, from this type of game. So, um, I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of in the. In the in a like in between camp about it, I don't really. I'm not overly hype about it. Not like I am about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but you know, that's another I mean, story for another day. <laughs> I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say this, Reggie. Though, like to, yeah. to expect to, to 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 for a massive game like this game to expect everything to move like uh, like a, a Horizon Forbidden West. That's actually wishful thinking, right? Because the, you gotta realize how many like. How many characters are actually interactive inside of a Bethesda game? So, I mean, there's probably going to be a little bit of a little bit of jank here and there because it's just, I mean, it even happens with a game like The Witcher. So, I feel like that's a little bit a little bit wishful thinking. Also, um, to 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 go into into um, what was it? A, it again, well, like we're talking about sixty frames per second, right? Right. Right. Um, Number one, like this is an actual game that's made for this generation. Unlike Horizon, I will argue Horizon Forbidden West was essentially a PlayStation Four game, and it was a PlayStation Four game because it released yeah. on PlayStation Four, and so, it started on PlayStation Four as well. And it started on PlayStation Four, so like officially, I don't like. I, I think we talked about this earlier. It's like a lot of games now when we are finally seeing these uh, seeing these titles that are for the generation. I'm sure you're gonna see that you're gonna see a lot of this. It's gonna be it's gonna be in the thirty the thirty FPS range if you're lucky. Yep. Right. But what what I would say is this though, and I had asked the question to Tony earlier before the stream. You know, okay. What if there's a game that's released on the platform, whether it be first party, third party, Sony or Microsoft, where okay, they said we're gonna come out with a, with a game that's equally ambitious right but 
it actually gives you the option for 60 frames per second and pulling off smoother animations, right? But how would it do that? Yeah, the no, thing I, about, I, I, no, the thing no, about, no. Like, like what? I mean, like, like the thing about it, like, I, I'm sorry to, to poke holes in this, but it's mm -hmm. like, that's just officially that's like wishful thinking. Like I feel like again, like we like, obviously we they set the precedence. They say that there's they say 60 frames per second at at, at, at at 4K. Number one, these consoles can't even do fucking 4K at 60. Half of these games are all upscaled. So it's like what what are like at the same time? It's like you have to you have to start setting their our our our, right. our, our, our right. you know our gauge because it's like. You know, obviously, people are going to get disappointed because the, because they're going to get um, washed out of the water because of, of the PC one can actually do the things that they that they're saying these things can do. And this has been the same issue from going back to the PlayStation Three era. Remember, right. the, back then they were touting uh, what was it, ten eighty uh, sixty? There's yeah, literally yeah. like two games that run a ten eighty sixty. <laughs> Here, here's uh, here's okay, real quick, Reggie, because this, this is what you were gonna get at, right? Because I also yeah. hate to use that term, but Manny is a good one. Poke a hole in it, right? Okay, because you said, what if a game comes out that is as ambitious as Starfield and it delivers sixty frames per second? What's gonna be Starfield's use? We can't say that until that game actually comes out. That's a pure hypothetical. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that game, and I will even say a game like that can won't come out. I guarantee you that. You know, like. Again, we are getting games that are made exclusively for this generation. You're not going to see as many 60 FPS games right now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you that right now, man. Uh, go ahead, Brett. Well, I want, I want to say, like, uh, Reddy, uh, I love you, brother. But you and I are diametrically opposed on, on this. Um, I, I think I'm not going to use you as a straw man here, but like mm -hmm. the the thing that I have with the people that I talk to that kind of share that same opinion mm -hmm. is I've been fighting a crusade. For years to kind of fight what I what I deem the dumbing down of games, right? Like we, we've lost so many systems in the name of pursuing shinier games, games with more polish, but they they've become very shallow. Um, and I, I think the kind of game that goes into it, I know a lot of people like it. It sounds like you might be one of them. You know, Horizon Forbidden West is just not for me. It's all polish and no. No death. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you know, you know. Brett was gonna come in when you mentioned negative Horizon. stuff about about uh negative stuff about uh what's it called Starfield and positive stuff about Horizon. It's like yeah, I was like <laughs> I was well, waiting, no, I was waiting for that boy. Let's well, go. Right, but yeah. well, I'm just saying not not the Horizon game. I'm just talking about the um the animations. Horizon can right. do that, right? Like right. like you need to think of these things as 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 resources and like. Because then the reason I feel so confident about this is like Todd Howard has explicitly stated several times that when people are saying, you know, like, is this going to game going to be 60 FPS? His mm -hmm. response is, we prefer to focus on the systems of the game and pushing that as far as it can go. Um, so while I don't think that there's, you know, uh, it, it's definitely going to be not at 60 FPS, I think that. If if they have to give up something to make it 60 FPS, they're not going to do that, and that's a decision I I respect because I I want these kinds of games where I was like, look, if it looks good, make it you know do as much complexity with it as, as humanly possible. Um, but those games have never looked great, to be honest. They've always been kind of janky. They've always moved kind of janky. They've gotten actually a lot better, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's what draws people to these games, and I. I want to be careful because I think we as fans have a tendency to kind of wish games into a corner, right? Like I, you know, like I, I look at Call of Duty and I'm like, well, Call of Duty is great, but like, you know, it'd be great as if it weren't, you know, kind of based on modern warfare. What if, what if it were this other thing? And then what if this, that, and the other? And what if it, it all were sorcery? And then, you know, let's 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 make it that. Let's make Call of Duty have an open world campaign that can. You can grind for loot, so it's not just a multiplayer thing, and it, it takes away the identity of the game. And I, I think that we're kind of running the risk of wishing all games into kind of an amalgamation, and that's what I'm really afraid of with people's response on this game. Is you know, there's going to be a lot of people like, well, it's, it's not 60 F F FPS, it's not 4K, it doesn't have this you know uh, triumphant story like Mass Effect. Like, no, and it's not supposed to really do. Right any of those things, I don't 
It's great right. if it does, but that's all icing on top of the cake. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that I, I, I won't play it, right? But I'm just saying, like, I mean, I don't even really too much care about the the 4K so much. But if there was an option to say, okay, can I, can we at least get, like, 1080p 60 or whatever? You know, I would, I would just still like to have that option. But that whether it's 30 or 60, it doesn't make the game, it doesn't um, make the game bad or anything, you know? So okay, so here's, here's a question I wanted to ask you guys because I was actually thinking about this. I was like, okay, so this is going to be locked at uh, 30 FPS, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. we know that it's going, it's, it's, it's coming out on the Series S, right? Yeah, that's gonna yes. be yeah, that's thir- thirty okay. FPS as well on that. So it's yeah. gonna be thirty FPS on the Series S, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what kind of boost are we going to get from a Series X? We don't necessarily they know. Al- they already confirmed thirty yeah, that, FPS yeah. at, at, on the Series X as well. The yeah. boost okay. is the resolution. A Series yeah. S is fourteen forty p, and Series X is four uh, K. Four K thirty. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Well, yeah, people are gonna be real upset about that. I'm I'm not necessarily one of them. The only thing I can understand uh, that I, well, obviously I understand because you know the industry sort of uh, pushed this through our brains. It's like sixty frame uh, frames is sort of like the the bees and knees of this. The only thing I will say though is even though I'm not as bothered as, as some other people are, but uh, I will say for first person, if you're playing first person on this game, I feel like sixty is you know is the gold standard for this kind of uh, gameplay. Um, oh, yeah, it would have been nice. So I understand if people who are expecting to play this in first person and want to play this in 60, uh, because most of their games, including Call of Duty, is always 60 frames, uh, isn't. So I understand that. Um, yeah, I can absolutely understand disappointment. I think that's fair, don't you? To be like, hey, I'm yeah. disappointed this isn't 60 FPS. Like, yeah, sure, we get it. Yeah, and, and you know, that's why I understand Reggie's where Reggie's coming from. Uh, the thing about the animations is is a little bit tricky because um, Bethesda games, like Brent mentioned, they're always been like this. So it's like their style. Um, and I do agree. It, it looks honestly, it does look kind of horrible <laughs> if you're if you're you know if you're asking me, uh, is it something that's going to persuade me to not play the game? No, uh, but I can admit that uh, the facial animations uh, and all that stuff uh, the 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 characters look really janky and kind of outdated. Right, man. I thought they looked so much better. I was like, like, Bethesda has had some help with their faces. <laughs> yeah, but they, their eyes don't move. Like it's weird. Like it's just they yeah. barely. It's it's it, it does look kind of weird. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Again, like please expect like a health. Like I don't know how to stress enough to anybody on the fence. Like expect a healthy amount of jank with it. It's a Bethesda title. Like. Don't all of a sudden forget what Bethesda does and expect this super highly polished, crazy cinematic, like, your follower is going to get stuck in a wall. And, like, shit, weird shit will happen. There's just so many systems at play. And the reason we forgive this is because, like, they've been doing this for, what, over 20 years, and yet nobody's managed to replicate their it's, formula. I, To be honest, I think that it, it, the, what, what, what it is is the amount of things that you can do essentially um outweighs the things that you, you know the 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 issues that the game has and this is something i have always felt with the grand theft auto titles they've always been glitchy they've always been weird they've animated odd but the amount of things that you can do in those games outweighs all the glitches and mess ups that the game has, and I feel like that's the same thing that happens with Bethesda. You know, yes. um, yeah, good yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah. actually going to go right to the next question. This is literally about this, but finish your point. But yeah, yes, you can. The, yes, you can. Yes, things are going to get janky. But the thing is, like again, it's like how many things can you do in that in a in a Fallout or a um or um Elder Scrolls game? Compared to the to the, the the part the other part of it, where essentially you'll you'll eventually fall to the floor, or your some other weird shit will happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me go go right to it because you know this you know the next question is related to this. And it's a good segue. Uh, Alpha Chuck, uh, Starfield is my number one anticipated game this year, hands down. I fully expect the game to launch with the typical Bethesda jank and typical minor bugs that come with it. That doesn't bother me. I view it as a worthy trade-off for the freedom the game offers. Do you agree, or should Bethesda be held to a higher standard with their releases? Do you see any chance that Starfield releases in such a good state that it does not 
get crapped over on social media? Bro, non-Bethesda games are releasing in Bethesda game release state. <laughs> yeah. Like, who knows what this brave new world holds in store for us? Imagine if this game's like the least buggy game that releases this year. I would, I would be like, okay, I'd be like proof of simulation. What kind of world are we living in where Bethesda <laughs> releases a solid AAA title, whereas everybody else is releasing broken, unfinished games? Like, come on. Yeah. No, here's the thing. Like, even if it has jank, if it has less jank than other games, that'll be a success. That's, yeah, that's, that's where we are right now, right. man. It's crazy. Yeah, that's all, yeah, that'll be already a W. Yeah. But for now, by their standards. Like, if it has less bugs than Jedi Fallen Order, it's like, okay, you won. You know, if it has less bugs than fucking Forspoken, you won. You know, it, we live in that world now, you know? It's crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I think most people that are hyped for this game are like Alpha Chuck and Brett. The bugs are fine because you're not getting any other game like that, you know? And here's, well, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's all, it all has to be parsed uh, in terms of, you know, who these people are. Like, who are these people? Who are um, these people? <laughs> there are people? There are people who criticize th these games for the bugs, for, you know, for the, the frame rates and for the... the 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 janky looking faces and our honest actors they're also the group of people who are just going to criticize anything they find because it's part of an agenda so we you know but and then and then there's a reverse as well so you know if if, if the game comes up buggy as hell people are right to criticize it you know even mm -hmm. like I, I understand it's like some people like say oh shucks it's bethesda you know no it's like sometimes you know Sometimes you have to put, you know, developers' feet into the fire so they can do better. If not, they'll never do it. So that's I, everyone. I, that's why I vote with my wallet. I am not buying Starfield. I've never Bro. bought a Bethesda game before, and I will never buy one ever. So. Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Manny, I kind of answered another question. It's like, who isn't going to be getting Starfield on the panel? Manny. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not interested in it. Um, like uh, if, if 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 things are gonna be the way they are, it's probably gonna be janky. And then I'll, also, I don't have the time to the time to play that sort of game. So I'm I'm good. Yeah, um, I'm uh, I'm yeah. very happy for all the folks that are that are excited for it. I was very impressed with all the things that you can do in that game. And you know, I'll I'll, I'll uh, what is it? Uh, I'll live vicariously through you all. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Is Adam um, gonna play yeah. this? What happened? Um, Adam does. It's, it's on Game Pass, so he'll probably try it. Yeah, yeah. he'll probably be on Game. Yeah, uh, I mean, he he I don't he doesn't really strike me as a person that cared for the Fallout games, but who knows? I thought he liked. Oh Fallout. my god! Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, I don't, yeah, I by the way, remember. um, real quick, actually, Brett, I want you to answer this one. Um, it's not directed at you, but I want you to answer it. Jay Shep goes. So, are people going to pre-order? Are, are people so are people going to pre-order since bugs are expected? Do you need to pre-order? It's on Game Pass. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. You don't need to pre-order. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, like it's just going to be there day one, free on my Xbox. Like that's I, I had mentioned before. Like I might buy the the collector's edition just because I generally like supporting Bethesda. But like I don't know. I kind of feel like. Adding my my numbers to the Game Pass subscription might send a, a clear message of the success, not necessarily to the general uh, world, but like to the people at Xbox who are making the decisions. They're like, "Look at all this Game Pass engagement." Yeah. Um, that, that's that's something I'd like to kind of see more of. So, yeah, it's just going to be there for me free on day. Like, why would you why would you pre order? Like, games don't work. Like, that's from when games ran out of stock and you wanted to make sure you got the hot new video game. Like, right. that, it, it does it. Like, you can preload, but I have Google Fiber, man. Like, I, I buy a game, I eat dinner, and then it's done by the, like, 30 minutes later. It's not really a big deal. So, unless you have some kind of compelling thing to give me for free, in which case, like, I, man, I... I, I I'm actually torn because normally I'd be like, I'm absolutely going to buy this game. It's no question. If you want me to pre-order, sure, you're just giving me free shit for a game I know I'm buying anyway. There's nothing I can really hear between now and then that's going to make me be like, no! Even if you're like, it's completely broken on release. Like, well, I'm sure it'll be fixed soon. 
these games have like a 10 year lifespan so fine but now i'm torn i'm like but it's on game pass or free but like i you i would totally buy this game but why would i buy it if it's free i, I'm, I, don't, I don't know man i guess i'm just gonna save the money and if it ever leaves game pass which it never will i will buy it i I don't. I, I just walk myself into a conundrum, man. I don't know. Hmm. Um, real quick here, I want to give a a shout out to um, and forgive me if I pronounce your last name wrong. Uh, Eric McKedden, my man's awesome in the chat because uh, Michael Santiago asked, "Will um, will Bethesda allow modders?" And he's like, "They built their entire like thing on modders, you know, which is true." And then you know, J. Shep asked, oh, "Are people gonna buy this game even if it has bugs?" And he's like, "Yeah, we we we'll deal with that, dude. This game, these games are awesome, you know, uh, right. you know exactly." Uh, real quick, he also goes, "I know when I buy Bethesda, I know when I buy single player Bethesda games on the creation engine that I'm buying a buggy mess, but ready for release, and I'm okay with it because eventually it'll become a game I play for hundreds of hours at a minimum." Yep, that that's pretty much all the hardcore Bethesda guys right there. That's why they buy these games; they deal with the bullshit because they're getting something that no other game gives them. You know, Reggie, go ahead, bro. Yeah, I think that um, <clears throat> just to touch on that, uh, really, when you look at it, right. The hardcore gamers, like, we're the ones that pay attention to the bugs, right? But if a, a casual person, they see a space game, oh, they got a space game on Xbox. I want to go and play it. It's probably not even going to really matter to them as much. They're just going to go and play the game. Bro, you, know? you have no idea. Like, okay, I, I wanted to say this, and this is a perfect time to jump in. Like, I agree. And here's the thing. I have seen no less than four girlfriends in my time go from not playing video games the playing video games because of Elder Scrolls. It, it's an insidious thing, right? Like, And I think it has something to do with the ability to drop it between first and third person because they're like, oh, I can't play first person games. You know, day one, I can't play first person games. Right. You set them out, you're like, man, you just wander around the village, there's maybe a bandit or two around, you can pick up potions and talk to people. It's it's social. It's And they're like, oh, okay. And they start playing it and then like, you watch them slowly, like, they'll walk up to a shelf and they'll be like, I can't see enough. And they'll switch into first person and look at the shit on the shelf. Like, flash forward two weeks later, they're running first person, like, dodging and, like, shoot, sniping bandits in the face. Like, I have seen it happen while, well, no, not three girlfriends and a friend of a girlfriend. But I've seen that game make gamers. I've seen it, like, create hardcore gamers just by kind of easing them into combat mechanics and first person and stuff like that. So to put this on Game Pass, where there's no barrier to entry, is going to be, it's an insidious, like, that shit is the first hits free kind of deal, right? Like, you're going to get a lot of casuals who are just sucked into this thing. Yeah. By the way, K uh, Kishak uh, puts in the chat. Kishak, uh, what's going on, brother? The, the first mod for this game will be the unofficial fix for the bugs. You know? <laughs> no, the first mod will be increasing breast size. The second okay. mod will be fixing bugs. There you go. That's new that new mods for days, man. Um, but yeah, good stuff. So yeah, people will overlook it because, again, they're not getting that kind of experience. Yeah, um, I, I mean, and and we also have to put into context that this is a mainline Bethesda <laughs> game, so they have a track record. Yeah. So people are more lenient with, with studios that have track records. Um, so, yeah, that's all. That's Pretty all I'll much. say. All right. Um, moving on here. Ace Ali, who's joining us in the chat tonight. Um, what does your game interest roadmap look like now for the remainder of 2023? From June 12th, you know, tomorrow, 2023 to December 31st, what are your must-play games, assuming you have any? So, yeah, you know, we get asked this question all the time, but obviously with all the stuff that got announced today, even though most of them is 2024, um, I think it's worth revisiting, you know, specifically. What was announced for 2023? Um, like one of the new additions. We, the, hold on, there was the, the Cyberpunk expansion. That's coming out this yes. year. Yeah, we, okay, that's yeah, right. Cause, yeah, because yeah. I was kind of up in the air. We didn't know. Um, so that's coming. So yeah, but other than that, I think my release is still the same. Final Fantasy 16, um, Cyberpunk, the, the Shredder's uh, Revenge uh, expansion that's coming, and Spider Man mm -hmm. Two, uh, and, and 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 Starfield Two. So yeah, that's five games. Uh, yo, I, I tweeted about this. I'm like, holy shit! 
I remember this feeling, the feeling of being excited about video games. I had almost lost that feeling this fucking generation. But watching this showcase, I'm like, yo, if these games come out, and we got a question related to this, if these games come out, next year may be it. The, the, like, this year's already been pretty okay when it came to right. game releases, but next year may be when the generation finally, officially, really fucking starts, you know, provided these games actually come out, because, you know, you don't know about that. But, yeah, it's a nice feeling. I had almost forgot. I thought it died. I thought it was just rotting inside, like, you know, that, that feeling of like, oh shit, games. Remember when games used to fucking excite you? I hadn't felt that way in months or years almost, you know, because of this Thanks. fucking lackluster generation, you know? Um, yeah, it's a beautiful here. thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, that's that's my updated roadmap. Um, oh, yeah, you know, I never gave my thoughts on Starfield like the rest of you guys. I'll play it, you know. But the thing is, I, I'm not going to... I I'm I got I we got I got a question about this uh, like Game Pass I'm I'm done with Game Pass I know what's gonna happen I'll subscribe to Game Pass play for like a month for the game I want to play then I won't play it again I'll just buy Starfield I, I'll just buy it you know like that'll be good I'll just buy the game because uh, yeah, on my PC you know on my PC yo Tony <laughs> yeah so my when we were watching the the stream yeah it seemed yeah. like it seemed like the the part that intrigued uh, intrigued you uh. The most from stuff that you learned was the whole ship creating stuff. Not really, because I already knew about that. You know, um, the thing that interested me most was ship battles. That's what it was. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh shit, you got ship battles in this motherfucker. You know, um, you know me? Yes, that that's nah. different. Um, and the fact you could board ships on top of that, man, yeah. that's crazy. Angry. You know, and um, and transferring your um ship's energy. Or something like that, whatever it's called. The thing from Star Trek. Yeah, of uh, def- the uh, redirecting power to uh, oh, redirecting yeah. power from the engines. Yeah, that like I'm yeah. like you won't. Yeah, that's total Star Trek right there. I love that. Which like deflate, like redirect power from the engines to the shields. Oh man, you know I'm gonna be doing that shit. Put all the <laughs> put, put all the power on the front shields and shit. You know, <laughs> you know, move it to the reflector array. Yo, I'm gonna be going crazy, man. Uh, Tony's gonna do ramming speed all the time. Yeah, ra- oh, all right, there we go, Chris. <laughs> oh shit. Put all, put all the power to the front shield and then <laughs> ram these motherfuckers. You know? <laughs> That's and, then, and then also, like, when you're, you're getting attacked and then you can go warp speed. Yeah, yeah. single single it, player, it, um, it. Jay Shepard. That's a big selling point to me, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Good stuff. All right, so, yeah, I'm going to go down the line here. Um, you know, has anybody updated their expected games of 2023? Uh, Reggie, I'll go with you first, man. Yeah, or second. I already went first. <laughs> Um, mm. right now on my list, I got what man, just say Spider Man, yeah, Spider Man, yeah, Spider Man, just say Volcano High, yeah, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, Spider Man, Spider Man 2, of course. Um, what about I the guess Final I could... Fantasies, man? Yeah, um, oh, oh, by the way, did you guys find out Platinum Games help with the, with the fucking yep. Me- yep. like game mechanics? Oh, shit. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Brett, I finally understand why you're actually excited for this. I was like, Brett, I th- I didn't know you care about Final <laughs> Fantasy more. Like, they're getting a fighting game engine developer to help with the fighting game engine for this game. Right? Yeah. I was like, okay, okay, I feel good about this now. Yeah, pretty dope yeah, stuff. So, yeah. So, Spider Man, Final Fantasy sixteen, of course, Final Fantasy seven Rebirth when it comes out. That's I'm not coming out. It's, it's gotta be this year. This year. This year. Oh, this year. So, yeah, it has to be this year. Confirmed this year. I can't play all the games, so yeah, Final Fantasy 16, Spider-Man 2, Starfield. Right, that's is. yeah, that's pretty much my my big three. If you want to put it like that, cool. <laughs> um, it may change. It may yeah. change tomorrow. And then it'll be um, it'll be forward. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you'll be forward. Yeah, yeah maybe some other stuff. You know, um, Manny, has your outlook changed on games this year? I mean, uh, um, the only thing I'm gonna probably play is Miles Morales about it you and mean, then the other yeah you mean and Spider-Man anything, too? yes well man too excuse me yeah um oh. yeah i'll be playing that um but um other than still not seeing anything right now you know i really don't care for a lot of the you know the usual fare i mean they, they announced a new assassin's creed but they lost me years ago so i and i don't care about that and you know so you know we'll see 
We'll see what that happens. was. That wasn't an Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> Remember that? Remember we screen? all got we all got yeah. tricked, boy. <laughs> yeah, we got yeah. we got tricked. We're like, oh man, this looks this looks like a uh, Assassin's. Creed. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. We were like, oh man, you could just tell this Assassin's Creed. It looked yeah, just we like thought, no. We were talking got, all that shit, man. They were like, they were like, gotcha. Yeah, your Carlos, like, yeah, the accountability yeah. room, man. We got to go go <laughs> yeah, You know, yeah, we all ate crow. Man. We all, yeah. all of us, man. We were all so, confident uh, as motherfuckers. <laughs> Is too. You can you can just tell by the look that it's an Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> Fuck that yeah. yeah, I, um, I got I got add one but, more um, game. Yeah, like for for as far as anything, everything else goes. <laughs> there's really anything that hasn't really impressed me enough to play. And then whatever things I do have a a passing interest on, to be honest, like they're on PlayStation Four. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like. You know, they still haven't really. The only reason I'm I'm even upgrading is just to play the new Spider-Man game. But otherwise, I really don't see any other reason to go pick up any of these consoles for for me. So. <laughs> hey, hey, Betty, uh, J. Shep goes. If you think Tony's tough on games, Manny is a beast. Yeah, man, and it's always been like that. Manny's always been a lot, a lot more. No, I've been, I've been, yeah, I've, yeah. I've been, I've always been incredibly picky about what games I play. But the the only difference is that. My opinions are not as um, uh, quotable as Tony's are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, me, I was just like, eh, I don't see nothing. I'm, Manny's you know, SEO I'm, is lower than Tony's. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, t t t Tony's, uh, Tony's, uh, Tony's just got one, just says one thing. I'm gonna yeah. go down the street, and then everybody's like, "What the fuck? Why are you going to go the street, man? Why are you going to the sidewalk, the street, motherfucker? Man, how come you don't go yeah. down the other way?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Reggie, what's up, man? I saw your hand raised, like it's fucking yeah. classroom. <laughs> hey, I, I got one more game. To, um, I, I got to add to the list. Um, Remnant from the Ashes too. I got to play. That's that's dropping this year. It. Oh shit! Yeah, this year. Oh, I told you. I told you. People Yo, are by the game. way, yeah, did, man. Uh, somebody, I think somebody asked us. It, it, actually, this was a question for tonight. Off topic a little bit. There's a fucking Liza P demo. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit! Yep. And the yeah, Final yeah. Fantasy 16 demo dropping. Oh, shit. tomorrow. Let's tomorrow. Go. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. If you think I'm picky, man, he's even pickier than me. You know. <laughs> Bro, you know, Liza P is coming to Game Pass. Is it? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was originally announced during the Xbox conference where. Yeah, I had no fucking idea that shit was out, man. That's that's awesome. Um, Chris, ha have you updated your you know anticipated games for this year now? You know, given what we've saw today. Yeah, clearly on top of the list was Exo Primal. You know, <laughs> we had that real <laughs> fucking DLC. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I um I do want to play Liza P though. That looks. It gives me such Bloodborne feels. Like I want to play it. If there's a demo, I I will try it. Um, I know the same. What's what comes out the same month as Starfield? There's something that comes out. Spider Man. Is it Liza P? Oh, uh, and Spider. Well, Spider Man was always on there. Well, that Spider Man's October. Yeah. yeah. October not is this next one. No, Liza P is September. Yes, Liza P September. So is Starfield, I believe. Right. Oh, uh, Spider Man's October twentieth. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, Spider Man's October twentieth. When, yep. when is Starfield? September sixth. Oh shit. Yeah. So it's it's fairly close. Um, yeah, they, I mean, there was not much else. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not Adam, so I'm not like, ah, Russell Quest comes out in August. <laughs> you know, um, ain't got no yeah. rock star table tennis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> I will add Alan Wake 2 to that. I, I do want to nice. play that. Mm. Yeah, and that's, a, that's also in October. Shit, they, also, Alone in the Dark is October. Fuck, I'm going to be broke. Uh oh. So, uh, so Spider Man October, all on the dark. I definitely want to play that, and Alan Wake too. So they're all coming out in like within a week of each. Uh, oh, Alan like, Wake's so, coming out this year. Oh shit! Yeah, mm -hmm. it's raining. It's raining games. It's games. Hallelujah. <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah. So that's what. <laughs> oh man! All right, good stuff. Uh, Brett, have you updated your um, game uh, release schedule for this year? I mean, updated it. I, the only thing I, I think is, uh, I think I'm due for a Cyberpunk play, uh, second playthrough. Yeah, man, let's that go. DLC, yo. Yeah, that DLC is going to be good, man. Um, I think everybody went. Good stuff. No. Uh, what's up? Did I miss anyone? T -t 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 Tony, 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 one more thing. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, just I'll go I'll go real quick. Um, yeah, I mean Spider Man, Spider Man, and Starfield are my two biggest. Oh, and Final Fantasy sixteen. Excuse me. Final Fantasy sixteen, Spider Man two, Starfield, the Cyberpunk DLC, Alan Wake two, and Liza Pablo. That's Liza Pablo. <laughs> you know? Liza Pablo. <laughs> okay. I might have to try this this demo. I'm I'm on the fence, but yeah, I gotta try the demo. Um, Throw the demo also, out there I, did, I did not say Final Fantasy 16. I missed that. That that's mm. definitely on my list too. I think yeah. everybody's excited for Final Fantasy 16 now. I Except think I was Manny. Cool <laughs> Except me. Yeah, right, man. They, they released one last trailer today. Yeah. Oh my god, that is that Final now, Fantasy. I don't 16. listen, when, when we're, you're Reggie. You, I, don't, you, I don't know if you saw like um my reactions on the PlayStation uh live stream i know we didn't even do that but i by this is what i said about that trailer and i'll say it again about this one don't give me any more fucking trailers give me the game that i just want now, the game now you know now that that, <laughs> that final fantasy 16 <laughs> a sanction trailer listen man i'm trying to tell you bro i'm trying to tell you right now b it's like that, that, that right it's like that because i'm over here like i don't need to see this shit no more man. just give me the fucking I, game hey listen we can all agree that we don't need to see any more of the game yeah. but that trailer just got me hyped for whatever reason. I don't know why. Make me watch this shit now. All right. I, I, I do got I, I to gotta mention one game that no one's mentioned. Uh, d- d- what about Mortal Kombat 1? Has Is that anybody. This year? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck! Yeah. Yep. Add it, add it to the list. Damn, yep. September's the, crazy right now. Man. By the way, September, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, fucking Starfield is September 6th. That's yeah. less yeah. than three months from now. That's wild. Yep. It's crazy. That's almost here. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is a good feeling, man. Video games, man. Why do you think I started this fucking podcast? Because I love games, yet I've been shitting on them for three fucking years because we ain't getting nothing. This is great. Give me more, you know? Not this fucking indie shit we've been getting all this time, you know? We're What's getting up? some real fucking games now, man. I love Yo, it. Yo, man, give us an old saga. Come on. Yeah. Yo, remember uh, the Gamer 2330? It's time for Grown Man Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out to Ray Jeremy, man. That guy's awesome. <laughs> Yo, if you guys haven't seen the Spider-Man videos, they're fucking gold. <laughs> it's time to <laughs> a pony <up>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. That is hilarious. Oh, man. All right. Um, Jay Shep goes, D- does any... Does anyone on the panel think that Starfield would have swallowed Spider-Man 2 if it released in September? No. No. Spider-Man is the biggest fucking superhero on Earth, bro. He's good. He's safe. You know? And you're going to get a like, crossover, but they are not the same kind. Like, not they at all. Are, yeah. Yeah, what I was saying, that, you know, that I don't want Starfield to be that type of game, like, that is a great example of the other type of game. I want them both to exist. Yeah. I'm going to be yeah. both of them. But like Spider Man is, yeah. it's it's directed, it's high budget, it's cinematic, it, it's narrative, it's all those things that Starfield is not. Yeah, and, and I want to kind of flip the the question a little bit, um, just as Starfield, because uh, he asked, uh, you know, would Starfield have swallowed Spider Man? It, no, and the other way around wouldn't work either. Spider Man wouldn't swallow Starfield either. They're very different games for different right. people, you know. So each of them, like you said, Brett, they could coexist just fine, you know. Yeah, my man Jay Shep. Uh, Gor- you know? Gorilla Games is foaming at the mouth to release another Horizon game during this time window. No, don't do it, motherfuckers! <laughs> don't, don't do it. it. They're don't gonna do get that. you and talk about getting swallowed, you know. <laughs> you know? They always those do are, this shit. Are, yeah. Quick mm-hmm. guys, a shadow. Now's the time to strike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like with the first game, they released it like a week within uh, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the and then Wild. This time it's like, eh, we got nothing coming out. Elden Ring, we don't got to worry Elden about Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about these Soulsborne mm-hmm. games. Oh, man. Um, all right, moving on here. Uh, Dumeke, who's very upset that he couldn't be on the pa- on the panel tonight. He has work tonight. Uh, he really wanted to be on, in the chat because he uh, enjoyed our um, previous stream. Shout out to to make it, man. Nice. Um, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So he goes, is it okay that most games shown at the Xbox showcase have 2024 release dates? Many 2024 games could be released at the end of that year or even delayed. I think that's a valid concern, you know? Yeah. So they said they said that it's, it's within an 18-month window, if I remember correctly. Um, 
Yeah, it's 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 a valid concern. I mean, for me, that's why you know if I were to grade this conference, I I probably would deduct deduct some points for that, um, because it would have been cool if a lot, uh, at, you know, a significant chunk would have been twenty twenty three games. Uh, but nonetheless, if they're twenty twenty four games, that's still you know, next year. So as right. long as it's not something like, and I, I will say this, Fable didn't get a date. Like Fable is one of them that kind of like irked me a little bit because it was just a CG trailer, yeah, and and we don't know that that didn't get a, a year ever if I remember correctly. Uh, I thought it was twenty twenty four. Did it? Did it have twenty twenty four? I think I, I'll look it up. Hold on, let's see. Wait, yeah, because I talking, I'll look it up. Which Fable? Fable? Fable. Fable or Fable? Yeah, what did you guys think of that trailer? Real quick, I don't know. That's corny to me. Uh, it's um, just it's it's a CG. It's supposed to tell you like sort of how the feeling of the game is, but you know. With, with these types of things, so it's, it's about gameplay, man. Yeah, because I'm like, I saw some dude from like, you know, the IT crowd and shit. I'm like, well, what are we doing here? You know, it's it's yeah. it's. I think it told you what it needed. Like, I don't know if Fable was ever really about the gameplay. It was it was kind of charming. It was quirky, and it was it was definitely coming from a comedic angle. And I think that they're like, yeah, we're being quirky and British again. And I think you know that's cool. Like I would, you know, I'm still waiting to see some gameplay, but the the idea I think is still there that like they're going to try and maintain the identity of what made Fable Fable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, are you guys concerned about uh, the 2024 release dates? I feel like 2024 is like we, dude. Just a few years ago, we were getting shit like five years ahead of time, right? Like. 2024 it, it isn't that bad did i miss something no i, I guess he's just saying are you concerned they're either going to release at the end of the year or get delayed even within the end of the year that's still you know uh a, a, a lot of stuff that, like that's that's what 18 months from now like that is not long from like the time of an announcement until the game release like, well, we gotta take them at their word by the way because yeah, you know, yeah, yeah last like, year they did the exact same thing and yeah, if, if it hits in there, but even even then, like delays within, like this new policy. Oh, oh only, right! It sounds like you muffled your voice oh, with something. Sorry. There we go. Um, thank you. The, this new policy that you know they seem to announce games that they intend to get out within the next twenty four months. You know that I on you know both this and Sony. Um, I, I, I feel like it changed so fast that now I'm sitting there questioning whether, it, you know, I'm like, it was that we were just getting games announced years and years and years ahead of time, even like just early in their development when they were before the, we literally had Cyberpunk announced before anybody started working on it, years before anybody started working on it, several actually. And so to now say like, they're announcing things that are going to be out within a 24 month time span most of the time, even including a possible delay, I feel like we all of a sudden live in a whole new world. I feel like Cyberpunk just shot the bed so hard that it, it changed some some stuff. Like, I, so no, I, I guess I'm not I'm not concerned. And my reverse question is like, this is still a pretty short window, isn't it? Like, I remember talking on this show about how amazing announcing something nine months before its release was like the fact that nobody came close to that with what fallout did you know a year to you know 16 months that's or 18 months that's not that's not bad yeah by the way ace ali you just fucked me up right now he in the chat he goes go to google and type in katamari and then click on the ball i was playing with that shit for like the whole time brett was talking <laughs> like go go check it out go, go to google right now uh, type katamari click and you're gonna see uh, kind of in the middle of the screen there's a ball you click on the ball and you, with the with the arrow keys you start moving the fucking ball around and it starts grabbing everything on the screen oh, crazy, crazy that's shit. pretty cool pretty awesome um all right um yeah reggie go ahead bro yeah um follow us i stand corrected uh fable did not have a release date no it never did it never did right um, or release window. Yeah. It didn't have any. Right. Even after today, right? Right. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Um to, to make another one. Um with Phil's continued promise year after year to do better in Japan, does a handful of multi platform Atlas games and one Capcom game cut it? 
I was I, I tweeted this on Twitter. I'm like, yo, Sega Atlas was like low key the MVP of this fucking co like uh, conference. I was a lot of games from them and a lot of new games, new IPs. You know, like that that Capcom game. Nobody knew about that shit. Like, yes, it's not an exclusive, but it's still shown at the Xbox showcase. I think that's significant. You know, um, and it's the first time we've we've heard of of it you know yeah. it was a world premiere like a lot world of the stuff premiere. um that disappointed me about the the playstation conference is they had a lot of stuff that we already knew we about already knew about yeah there was a genuine surprise yeah. and there was another one carlos wasn't there like another rpg and shit i was like whoa what is this you know like oh, was it, uh, well, uh, it was it was the shin megami tensei looking one yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It was like, metaphor. yeah people yeah that's it i'm like what the fuck is this that's cool yeah you know so yeah no i'm glad you know those japanese games got got their Got some love, you know. It's good stuff. Um, uh, Blitz, what's going on, brother? My man uh, made it. Let's fucking go. You know, now the podcast can really start. You know, even though we've been doing this for an hour, <laughs> uh, but we just answered your your questions, man. So I'm gl I'm glad you could be here. Talk shit with us, you know. Um, you uh, miss me. You miss me going on a rant about how happy I am to finally feel good about being excited about games again I haven't had that feeling in years you know you mean three bitch, years yeah three years but this bitch ass generation you know so like watching this shit you know like yeah man i remember that getting excited about games you know it's good yeah. stuff um all right let's move it on here mob hits all right With um the on the on the flip side here was microsoft showcase disappointing not oh. to me no nah, i wouldn't say nope. it wasn't no nope. it was it was better than the PlayStation one. Better, yeah, and, yeah. And better than the they fucking actually, the bullshit a uh, Summer Game Fest one too. You know, they had a, they had yeah. an actual showcase as opposed yeah. to whatever the hell Sony and and and, and the key and uh, and key three uh, key three <laughs> key three. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I want to say this that you know we we briefly touched on this uh, before the podcast, Reggie. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they they the way the show was presented was better, right? There, yeah. For me, there was no point where I started getting really bored. Like you, you didn't get two boring games in because there were some clunkers. Don't get me wrong. You didn't go more than two games before you got something interesting again. With PlayStation, there was a good thirty minutes of bullshit in the middle where you're like, "What the fuck is this?" They even threw like two movie trailers at you. Like, what are we doing yeah. here? You know. But this one. It was a good ebb and flow. Like it started strong, of uh, the middle something was stuff, and I think the test, the fact that on the stream we were like, "Yo, that's it," because it flew by so fast. You know, yeah. it, like it was a good mix of shit. That's how you're supposed to do it. It's like you know, you you get your big games, you got the little games, you got the in between in games and shit. Like you know, give us all of that stuff, and I think it was really good. And I also do believe they had the benefit of hindsight they saw what playstation they're like okay let's not do that you know um yeah so yeah I, I think it was a good showcase man i don't think it was disappointing at all you know i would say this is the best xbox showcase they've had in in quite a long time i'm gonna agree with that man um but, but reggie just to the point you didn't hear anybody going wait till next year nobody said that this time. yeah 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 nobody <laughs> said wait till next year and, and one and one thing that i like although that xbox they said did, wait till next year because every game's coming out 2024 but i digress yeah, <laughs> yeah they got away one smart choice i think that phil spencer made was you know having them get away from the uh the 12 month calendar year right yeah. where you know you want a game to release every month but that's kind of for what they want to do that's not realistic right so having them to break away from that i think that gave the show it gave them more uh breath to for the show to really um do what it needed to do they you know i i thought they did a, a fantastic job you know uh for what xbox can do now they just have to deliver you know on the on the promise and yeah you oh, keep moving forward yeah we're already getting some ratings here um yeah. mob hits thank you for that he has rated one to ten uh blitz goes he gives it a 6.5 to 7 on its own but an 8 compared to the other two uh mob hits damn he gave it a 6 um that's kind of brutal shit man hey. harsh motherfucker man damn. I, i'm curious after why he gave it a 6 though yeah uh, j j shep remember j shep he don't like xbox like that 8.5 i agree with j, j shep on that one i'm gonna give it 8.5 as well that's a good one you know 
um, Ace Ali, 6. Uh, Kishak, 6.5. Um, lots of sizzle, no steak. God <laughs> 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 damn, you guys are hey, fucking man. brutal. You know, that, that steak could have been that sinuous sacrifice, but you know they yo, they, yo, they had no sauce on that joint, man. You know, yo, what I'm yo, Reggie, man, you saw homegirl, man, you ready for that bath water, man? <laughs> uh, oh. Hey, man, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Shit, man. <laughs> she, hey, she don't deserve that title yet. You know, hey, not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Some inside jokes me and Reggie got here, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on, uh, Knee Freedom Gamer? Welcome, welcome. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, yeah, no, nobody was disappointed by it. Um, another one Yo, from solid show, man. Real solid. Yeah. Another one from Mister Mob Hits. Now this might be disappointing, you know. Um, um, was the S Xbox Series S one terabyte announcement pointless uh, when you can buy a PS5 digital for another $50 that has the bells and whistles that you need? That's a good uh, question. It, just, it, uh, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead, Brent. Uh, he makes a compelling point. He does make a compelling point. You know, you already know my answer. I've been from the jump, I've said they shouldn't have released that system, you know? So yeah, skip that shit. It's yeah. It was just go ahead, Brett. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, it just sucks because I thought it was gonna be something more substantial. I thought it was like, oh shit, we're getting a Xbox Series X Slim or something. But no, it was a it was a just an Xbox Series S in black. Yeah, a oh, bigger hard drive or SSD, and that's it. Yeah. Oh, real quick, just to go back, uh, Blitz goes after literal years of sweet fuck ups. From Xbox, I need to see more to be happy. That's fair, but we're just talking about the actual presentation itself. We're not talking about like you know the whole state of Xbox. Just the presentation itself, you know. Right. Um. Go ahead. Anyway, go go on. What the fuck was the now I forgot. I got sidetracked. Oh yeah, the the Black Series S. Yeah. Fuck. They need to just continue that fucking con. I know they won't because that's like the best selling Xbox console right now, but. We got another see, question that's, about that. It. That was my feeling too. I was like, oh, so they're just going to keep supporting this, huh? All right. Yeah. Cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, a one terabyte of storage is becoming increasingly necessary. Yep. Yes. Um, yes, it is. But yeah, I, f I feel like that's something that can be resolved by um, just like third, like just plugging a chip in. You know what I mean? Like that. That doesn't need to be. You don't need to give me a new Xbox if you want to announce that it's now in black. But no price increase, cool. But I, I just, I don't necessarily think that. I don't think that the price increase is worth it. Not because I wouldn't spend that much money on storage anyway or more, but that I think that the people at that that price point, it's the price point that sells them, right? Like three hundred bucks, like that's the price of the switch. Yeah. Right? That, that, Brett mentioned uh, the the first sentence he uh, he said when he started this. He said, "One terabyte of storage is necessary these days," and it just the it, my my tunnel vision went to 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 this moment in time in 2017. And Chris and Tony know this when they were arguing with this one particular fellow who said that the internal storage of the Switch was enough. Remember those days? Oh my <laughs> God! Like yeah, the thirty was it thirty two gigs? It's like that. Oh, that's enough. You don't need an, ex an external uh, oh, my <laughs> storage for that. I remember was it the PS4 right? Yeah, it was the PS4 era. They came yeah. with 500, 512 gigs. We were like, "Yo, that's not enough." Back then. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, and they're still coming out with paltry fucking uh, storage space. Even one terabyte is kind of bare minimum. Let's be real yeah. here. You know, I mean, with a with a PlayStation Five, um, yeah. we obviously we don't get a whole terabyte. Uh, we get less. I don't forget. I was like six six hundred or something. I don't remember. But um, you know, even I was talking to Tony the other day. I'm thinking about you know getting an SSD upgrade because it's just not That's enough. Whatever it came with. Yeah, Are no, you sick not. of cycling through the same six games you could have on your PlayStation at once? No, because games are getting bigger. Yeah. Final Fantasy it's, VII Reborn is in two discs. That's, yeah. I'm, what is that? Two <laughs> discs. Yep. Yeah. Two, two discs. Two discs. Yeah. I, I know. I just 
Two discs. No, you're right. No, you're, just, uh, you yeah. remember that was what somebody in the audience screamed when they said two discs. Yeah, somebody, yeah. That was probably hip hop. Yeah, it probably was. Two discs is crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you spilled the belt. <laughs> you spilled the belt. Yeah, spin the belt. Spin the belt. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, Blitz goes. Uh, I wonder if the success of the S will lead to a lower spec next gen console. They can lean in on PC to flex. Please, God, no, no. I hope next gen we don't mm -hmm. get any bullshit console like this. Stop holding the generations back with outdated fucking hardware. That's why I hate the goddamn Switch. It's a piece of shit. It was a piece of shit when it released because it was so low spec. Stop doing stuff like that. Let Nintendo have that shit, not the real consoles. Please, you know. Grown man gaming, you know, leave that shit alone. You know, <laughs> Dude, I, no, I feel it. Like I feel that this is why. Like this is what happened when there's not enough competition between the two major fucking players in the goddamn space. People lean back and they're just like, you know what? We don't need to press games. You know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna let a lot of third party games and indie games make a lot of shit for it. Like they don't need to try. You you, you start getting triple A uh, first party exclusives pushing that pushing that boundary. That's when they'll be like, no, no, wait, we're not going to have this come out on a low spec console because this shit needs to look flashy as fuck. Yeah. Uh, Blitz, I wasn't yelling at you. I was just yelling at the idea in general. <laughs> like, no, yeah. no, no, no lower the specs. Stop it. Yeah, he's yelling at clouds. Don't yeah, worry. It's exactly. Cool. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm a bad guy, you know. Um, all right. Anyway, moving on here. Uh, Assyrian Air Force. Uh, a couple more questions about the S here. Um, has Microsoft thrown a wrench this generation with the Series S holding back the generation? Some developers are sure as fuck complaining about that, you know? Yeah. Uh, again, I I've, I've been saying this from a jump. That console should not have been fucking released. I realize it's made Microsoft money, but that's, that's a bad precedent. You don't want to be releasing hardware like that, man. That's fucking embarrassing, you know? Anyway, Reggie. Yeah, on, I don't man. know how they walk themselves out of this. Like, I, I, I don't. I don't like, either. I, I was thinking the same thing, but I'm like, how do, how do you get away from this? You know, so yeah, no. It, and when when you say like, did they throw a wrench in? Like, yeah, I th I think by the very definition, like, yeah, man, like they made themselves a problem that they can't just walk out of, like without egg on their face. So they either gotta stop. So like, how are they gonna transition out of this? Because I can't, I can't believe they're gonna support this thing for the whole generation, right? I hope not. Stop hope supporting not this bullshit. I, I think that um. The, the smarter choice would have been to me if you if you were going to release a digital box right they could have did what sony done and just released a digital version of the series x at a, a a lesser price or just have the one box where it used to have the option of both even if it has a disk drive which i doubt most of us are probably really using outside of watching movies or whatever or whatever that case may be, you can still download the games, right? Yeah. Just just release that one box in. That way, the developers they wouldn't have to worry about. We got to develop for this lower spec system too. We got to keep this in count, so everything has to be in line. Yeah. Where Sony, yeah. they didn't do that. They said, okay, no matter what, if you get, no matter which PlayStation Five you get, the experience is going to be the same. Yeah. I think that going yeah, they, into yeah, they, they didn't give the system, yeah. Right, and I think that going into the next generation, um, maybe they do leave the S behind and say, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. Let's just go with our, let's just support everything. If, if they was going to support anything, I would say support the X and whatever your newest console is going to be. And everything after that should just get cut off. Yeah, they need to, don't release lower spec consoles, please. You know? Right. Leave that shit to Nintendo. Don't do that with you know, the consoles. Go ahead. I, I actually just thought of if they may say games games towards the end of the generation have to be streamed on the S. They can't play natively. Yeah. They should that, just do that probably. now. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that. I think that'd be smart because they can do that. You could you could technically do that on the one. You know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think that would be their way to get out without pissing a lot of people. Like, no, you can still play it, but like. This game can only be streamed on the S or played natively on the X. And they'll have like a little symbol on the back of the case that'll tell you kind of how it breaks down. Like that's 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 their only option as far as I'm concerned, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh Mighty Nerd goes, have you guys noticed Sony did not advertise the DE during the Q announcement? 
Um, do we, DE? Is that the, the special edition uh, controller? Is that what you're talking about? Dual shock edge, know. right? Isn't that what it's called or something? Maybe that maybe that's what the D is. I don't, I don't know, mighty nerd. You could fill us in on that. Uh, sure. it, 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 if if it is, then here here's your answer. Like Sony just doesn't believe in anything. They're they're like a thirty year old uh, out of work person. Like it is like they have no belief in anything. They'll they'll try. They'll they'll put out a VR. They'll they'll put out something, but like they don't really have a lot of faith in anything that they do. They're very I don't know self critical. I. But like it's it's that's how they were with a lot of their toe dips. So like yeah, we'll make this. I don't think a lot of people will be interested. Oh, did he was and, talking about the digital edition? Okay. Um, why would they advertise it? They want you to buy the more expensive one. Yeah, <laughs> you know I, they don't advertise yeah, it because they want you to buy the five hundred dollar one. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah they I think, don't care. They're getting their money either way. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the the fucking uh, the PlayStation Store is. Sad. Like I went to buy Miles and Morales, it was still fifty bucks. Yeah, I, I think that they had um, uh, they did a uh, they promoted the the controller like um a couple of weeks before the show or whatever the case was. They had some YouTube videos about it, but yeah, but he was talking I'm about why didn't they advertise the digital edition console? But it's like, no, why would they do that? Oh, the digital edition. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, cause, I mean. It's already out there, and I guess they got the numbers on it. And most people like it. So, for instance, I went in Walmart um, down the street from my house, right? And my, I'm not going to say necessarily down the street, but it's like 15 minutes away. And most places, when you walk in these stores, they're going to have the more expensive version of that box in the store, right? I have yet to see a digital PlayStation 5 in store for sale. Yeah. Not saying that they don't have it, but if they're going to show, if they're going to put anything in that display case, it's going to be, it'd be in their best interest to put the more expensive version in there. Yep. That, that's just, that's just smart business, man. No, exactly. Um, all right. Um, another one here uh, from Assyrian Air Force. Why won't they show Series S gameplay when it's the most sold system in xbox ecosystem because they want the games to look their best man you know there's a conversation we had with you guys a, a while ago about how come these games don't look the way you know we get them it's like because they are purposely trying to deceive you that's just called marketing even back in the day those video game uh magazines we used to buy those pictures in there yeah. they were doctored too they've always been doing this don't 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 think that they're showing you actual gameplay in good faith Th that's what it was the conversation was about redfall they're like how come they were showing this game to us in 60 frames a second meanwhile the real game's 30 frames they've always done this but when you first saw metal gear solid 4 it, first time ever, right? That show was running yep. at 60 frames a second. That, it was not 60 frames for real, but we knew that. We knew that going in. We're like, oh, that was cool. It ain't going to look like that, you know? Yeah, unless it says captured on the console yeah. of the, the, this is for, then don't listen. And even then, yes. it's going to be the highest end console that they have. Exactly. Right. So this is why, let's just be real here. Even when they advertise you console, you know what they finish to show you? They show you the PC version. You yeah, know? and, and Man, you remember our first E3, right? We were checking out both PlayStation and Xbox, right? There was no console in sight. There was yep. no console in sight. It was rigs. It was PC rigs everywhere. Yeah, they're all you the know? PC rigs underneath the thing. Why would they yep. be? Why would there be consoles there? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I and I got a small story from 2017. Oh shit! About that, right. So we at the Microsoft press conference, and they showed Anthem, and. Clear as day to say, yeah, running on Xbox, right? So I'm sitting up higher in the in the on the second balcony, up by the rigs and stuff. So I look, I could kind of peek behind the curtain. The whole time they was playing, they well, whatever they were showing, it was on PC. Yep, straight up, smoke and mirrors all day. Yep, and, and, and yeah, yep. they're not gonna show you the least spec version of a game they're gonna show you the highest end shit possible no matter what it, it's the, the dread you know what it reminds me of? the equivalent of like you know when you see those mcdonald's burgers and shit they look so good if you actually saw what was in that burger that's on tv you'd be disgusted you know that's they do yeah. all this shit to make it look good you know um and that's how advertising works man that's just how it is you know? Bro, did you know in cereal commercials when they show the milk like splashing on the cereal? That's not it's milk. All thick and, yeah, it looks all thick and delicious because it's glue. Yep. Yep. That's how it is, man. You know? Um, 
Uh, <laughs> Blitz goes, this is why it's safe to be a Switch gamer. Can't fake that shit. Yeah, the games look ugly as shit. It's an actual representation of the games, you know? Um, I mean, y'all still seem to get fooled by Pokemon. Yeah. No, oh, man. All right. Um, that, and that's not on that, you. That's not on you. That's on Game Freak, man. Yeah, that is true. Um, another one from a Syrian Air Force. Yeah, I'm allowing more questions because it's, it's a special episode. We got Reggie here, man. Um, <laughs> uh, was Xbox... Ooh, Reggie, I want you to answer this one first. Uh -huh. um, was Xbox misleading when it promised no CG trailers, but we got a bunch of in-game engine footage instead? So, ooh, that's a good question right there. Remember, Aaron mm. Greenberg, no CG. Yeah, technically, we didn't get CG. We got a lot of in-game footage. So, or in-engine footage, I should say. Right. So, I think for Xbox, they when that statement was made, they kind of thread the line. As soon as I heard that, I called Cap all day, right? <laughs> because um, there is almost no press conference that's not going to have some type of CG trailer. There's only... Hmm, dang, I'm trying to think. Man. Um, a, if there was any press conference that never showed... Like, they just had straight gameplay and no CG trailers, but... Um, I don't, I don't want to say that they were misleading. If anything, I, I, I would say this. If you want to take Aaron Greenberg's statement about what he said, yes, they were, I would say, yes, it was misleading, right? But if you look at the Sony press conference compared to what Microsoft showed, then I would say, I don't want to say you, to give them a pass, but in, I would say in that sense, they kind of didn't mislead you because Sony showed full on like CG trailers that didn't show anything. Most of the trailers they showed didn't give you any idea of what the game was going to look like, right? But with those, with the mic, with the Xbox trailers, um, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but the in engine at least get when they said in engine, it at least gave you an idea of what that of, of what that game. Or the, or the IPs are going to look like, right? That the idea that, that this is the vision, this is what we're targeting, right? Um, so in that aspect, um, I would say, besides the comment that Aaron Greenberg made, because sometimes he tends to, I met the man in person, I'll just say this, he does a great job of marketing. He's really good at his job, but he he would turn it up, he would turn it up to, to a thousand real quick and have you thinking that, you, that you can hold the moon in your hands and that's just not possible right <laughs> so you know um but yeah i think i think you know he over exaggerated a little bit but i don't i don't think it was misleading you know i didn't you know it was what it was you know i mean yeah so that's my take on it. yeah i i I, I, I appreciate your diplomatic take on it because I'm going to yeah. say he, it, it was it was absolutely misleading. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not going to tell me that fucking Star Wars trailer was in game. That was CG as okay, shit. Okay, okay. That was right, CG as shit. You know? Right. But see, right. And see, that's what I mean. It's like, okay, yeah, most of these, they're going to have these CG trailers, right? But again, and my thing is this too. And I, I'm being, I really kind of, I hate this part because it's like, okay, you know that. Okay, you got y'all said you're gonna present a trailer at a press conference and say, okay, you can watch it tomorrow at Ubi Forward. Well, why not show the trailer at Ubi Forward? Why do I need to see it at your press conference? I want to see the game with gameplay. We are so far, I think, just as me personally, I think that we are so far beyond the days of okay, I, I'm gonna show you a trailer, but the game isn't going to look like this to now we're to the point where I agree. You actually have engines where the game literally looks like, you know, like what you're going to play, but yet we still, we got to outsource these companies that make these trailers that may not be what the game is, and then it's going to change. Like, look, prime example, when they showed Avowed this time versus the when you first saw it, that whole, the, the game looked totally different. Concept, the idea might be the same, but it looks totally different. Even, even down to the actual lettering, right? Yeah. But in another example, let, let's say, um, 
the E3 where they showed uh, this is just the opposite of it, where when we first saw Horizon um, Zero Dawn, right? And that E3, they, they had that presentation and they showed that trailer. We all thought that, man, there's no way that the game looked like this, right? There's no way. It blew our freaking minds, right? And then they went to gameplay seamlessly. Like, Dude, listen, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. So, but so, yeah. yeah they gotta yeah, do that, man. Like, yeah, no, just I agree. Do that. But, but it, it, here's the thing. Yeah. By the way, are we actually gonna get Star Wars footage, like, or gameplay tomorrow? Because that's, that's the, what they said. That's what they said. That, it was on the thing. Man, I, I think I remember that. Yeah, but but I I, 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 I will say that. this though. Again, Aaron, because you know me, guys. I'm a I'm a literal motherfucker, right? If you yeah. say no CG trailers, you have one CG, even one CG trailer. I call that a fucking lie right there. So yeah, he lied, man. That that yeah. that Star Wars, no fucking way was that in game engine. No way not, in not hell. That, yeah, you know, right. And that's why that's why I said, you know, I, if you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I, I I guess what I was talking about was really the stuff that was pertaining to Xbox. That's what my mind was at, right? But again, okay. Now since you said that, Tony, yeah, I agree with you. He did lie. If we yeah. take, if we taking that, if we taking that, the whole thing into totality, yes, again, that you got to go. You got to go for the exact words. My man said no CG. That very okay. clear about that. No CG. I saw CG. <laughs> Blitz said uh, Greenberg had one job and he failed. Okay, if we look at it like that, yes, he failed because he didn't tell the truth. So yeah. he failed. Is he gonna be like, oh, this stuck that in last room minute? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, moving on here. Last two questions of the night, man. From Logic Wins. By the way, I don't think I saw him tonight. Um, he's usually here well, in the streams. He, he was in the uh, reaction on uh, press conference, and when y'all yeah. were doing reaction, he was in there. Yeah. yeah, he was in there, but he's not here, you know. But yeah, shout out to Logic mm -hmm. Wins. So uh, before he starts, he goes, "I'd like to apologize to Brett for attacking him for his preferences regarding Starfield's frame rate. That frustration is meant for Microsoft for continuing to dance around this topic. Um, but we're not dancing around it now, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah. Brett, yeah, he, go ahead." I didn't feel attacked, man. Like people get passionate about that shit. You don't take it personally. Like that's that's how it is. But I appreciate it, man. Like yeah, man. That's cool of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I he, did, he, I, I did, he 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 ate he ate crow in the Discord for real because basically he was like apparently shout out to Blitz. You know the accountability room. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so apparently Logic Wins was like mad about um, Redfall being six, you know, thirty frames a second, but he was okay with. Starfield mm -hmm. being thirty frames a second, Bliss like, hold up, bro, hold up, hold yeah. up, you got, you got, you got to come correct with that shit. Yeah. And Ace Ali's like, you know what? And, and, and then Ace Ali, I, he goes, yes, you know what? Yeah, that's right. I, yeah, I, I admit it. You know, I came off like a bitch. You know, so yeah, there you go. He admitted it. Um, yeah, when Logic, when yeah, Logic, said, off, what he said, when Logic was going, off, when yeah. Logic was going off by the Brett, by Brett, I defended Brett. You know, I was saying you got to chill, man. Yeah, like, you did. Yeah, you were in the chat. I remember that shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. I said he like he. Th this is what he like, man. Like, let let him let him rock. Yeah, right. like, Carlos, yeah, Carlos, what's up? Yeah. Okay, give me some context for the story if you got it. If you got more of it. Oh no no no! It it wasn't about that. It was uh. So who so who was the one that apologized to Brett? Uh, Logic, Logic wins. So Logic wins is the one that said that, and then Ace Ali is the one that retracted on the the thirty frames per second stuff and the accountability. Oh section, okay, right? yeah yeah. I think so, yeah. Because I, I, th I think it was Logic Wins, but I could be wrong. Well, you, Bliss, you could let me know. Wasn't it Logic Wins? I think it was him that, because he was the one railing on, like, you know, saying, no, saying Starfield is okay at 30 frames, but he was shitting on Redfall for being at 30 frames. And you were like, hold up, bro. You being inconsistent Yo, got, here, you know? We got a cool community. Yeah, man. I, uh, you guys hold yourselves accountable. I like that, you know? Yeah. And uh, by the way, Tony, uh, I don't know if you saw there were... Some late questions. I don't know if you want to yeah, include those. In. In. Are they related to the topic at hand? Because uh, I because I, I purposely took out some questions that aren't related to this. So these these were posted these were posted while the show started. Oh, so shit. that's why you probably didn't see them. Yeah, yeah. Are they related to the topic? Uh, 
they have to do about the the generation about this generation. Let me look at this shit real quick. Uh, so I'll, I'll, cause, cause that's, I'll, oh damn yellow oh, but it's my homie though man jolly yellow got, uh, gotta put the homie in uh, the, the, I'm gonna, yeah let's add those because they're 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 pertinent to the conversation yeah Carlos you, can you, you want me to you, yeah, you yeah, yeah just yep. add it thank you sir um good stuff um all right okay anyway let's get to his, his logic wins his actual questions here um uh, was there anything you wanted to see from the Xbox showcase that wasn't shown? Uh, mm -hmm. Reggie, you go first if you want. No. No? Everything was... Well, you don't get hyped. That's why. You know? Yeah, I don't get hyped from I don't. I don't... My, listen. <laughs> Tony, Tony <laughs> knows this. My number one rule about any press conference or really anything is that I keep my expectations below zero. So that in the, in the event that, you know, my feelings don't get hurt. That that came from um, uh, E3 twenty oh no, two thousand six. Uh, I don't want to relive that. Not to, it was two thousand eight when they showed all the connect stuff, and they just kept showing it. Skittles. And a lot of I had my, my remember that bullshit, man. Yeah, it's like the things that I I wanted them to show were only yeah. in my mind, but they weren't promises. They weren't real. So I just don't expect anything from any of these conferences. To be honest with you, that I I, I would say. You want the con you want them to sell you on the product, not be sold before you've seen the product, yeah. right? Th so that's how I treat it. Just like Sony, I didn't go into this show expecting anything. I just wanted a good show, and that's what I got. So I'm, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, there wasn't anything that I because I wasn't going in with any expectations, so I wasn't disappointed. You like, I, I think so, I think some of the reason I'll let you go next, Brett. I think some of the reason some of the guys may have given us a low score is because they wanted to see specific games and they didn't get them, so they're upset. But it's like you can't go in there expecting stuff, man. Like you really can't. Yeah, you know. Um, Brett, go ahead. Well, I, I think like it like there's stuff that everybody wants. Like if you could wave a magic wand, yeah, there's stuff that I would love to have seen, but like. How realistic is it? Not, not really. And like, it's just like I try not to judge a game based off the thing. Like, I, I'm not going to judge Call of Duty based on its lack of open world, right? Like, I try and keep things in context and judge them as they are. So, you know, that being that being said, if I could just wave a magic wand, I think there are two things that I would have liked to have seen. One would have been actual gameplay for Fallout. Uh, I feel like honestly, that's a little bit unrealistic. I said on the stream, I'll say it here. I am just fucking pleased that the game it it exists. It hasn't fallen into development. I I I when I heard that they were put a racing team in, in charge of this thing, like I was immediately like, well, this thing's bound for development hell, and then the, the IP is going to get locked up forever. But it seems to be progressing. They seem to have a pretty good beat on the tone that they want. So that's more than I expected. So I'll I'll kind of be happy with that. The one other big thing is. And then I know this would be a big ass, but like I would have loved to have heard, just heard something about Fallout 5. I don't want you to wait five years to start development on Fallout. Ten years between your mainline games is too much. Just let me know that the wheels on Fallout 5 are turning. I don't need any more. And you don't need to do anything other than show me a flashcard. This is the one time where I would be okay with you just flashing a title at me. Just let me know that it's not just a hand that you're kicking down the road and haven't even broken ground on it. Let me know some conceptualizing has been done, that it's being worked on, because we know Elder Scrolls is coming. We know it's in development. So just let me know Fallout's in development. I would absolutely love that, because again, I might be dead by the time the next Fallout comes out. I could be hit by a bus. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. Um... But I, don't you think we're gonna Elder Scrolls, uh, Elder Scrolls Six first? Because that, no, that, 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 like, that was at least announced, you know. No, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, and that's why I say, like, and that's very much. If I could wave a magic wand, those are the two things I would have liked to have seen. I don't need to hear about Elder Scrolls because I know it's in development, and I'm fine with you just being like, "Yeah, sure, it's in development." And you know, la last time we didn't even know Fallout was for sure in development until nine months before the game release. They just dropped that bomb. So. Yeah. It could be in development. I should probably feel safe about that, but like, man, it's they they don't release these games often enough. 
you know, it's it's the the polar opposite of the Ubisoft problem. Like, yeah, yearly too much. Once a decade, not enough. It's fine to build around. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, related, semi related to that. Um, mm-hmm. uh, apparently, uh, Skyrim has sold over sixty million copies. I can believe that. It's been really released so many goddamn times. Yeah, it's yeah. it's on everything. Which yeah. brings me to which brings me to another question. Being that you know now, uh, those the Bethesda games. Well, at least the if you're looking at Starfield, you know they are with Microsoft now. So I wonder how that changes the dynamic of things going forward. Being that they are going to be released on everything now, wherever every, well, everything except Nintendo and PlayStation. <laughs> I mean, with it, like, it really depends on how much Microsoft is in for the idea of kind of cross-pollinating talent. If, right. if you could offload some of these systems to some, some people who, you know, have this as specialty or have, you know, because you, you own everything. Like, so yeah. why could, uh, you know, not just give the engine wholesale over to um, not Black Isle Obsidian, give it over wholesale to Obsidian. Let them make Fallout New Vegas too, right? Like if you're not doing anything for a decade, let somebody else do it. It's not yeah. like it's a shared intellectual property. So like I'm hoping that they'll be able to leverage that, and I'm really hoping that because that could be a big thing that Microsoft does um, to leverage their assets is if they can get some of these people to work in concert and have good relationships and feel like because one of the biggest problems when you're dealing with teams like this, right, is you see a drop. You don't see additional efficiency when you add team members most of the time you know there, there's there's a, a a culture shift there's time getting them settled in their new job there's all kind of time getting them caught up it's it's actually not necessarily advantageous to just throw work and money workers and money at the problem but if you have companies that have good relations and workers who are already used to kind of jumping around where they're needed and like this is part of their job you could minimize that negative and really exploit a wealth of talent that isn't just limited to whatever game they're currently working on, that it can be outsourced for, um, what's the word I'm like, consultation and almost like a consultation kind of manner. Like that, that would be the biggest thing Microsoft could do now that they've acquired a good suite of studios would be cross pollinating their talent. So if they're willing to do that, they could dramatically reduce their development time and probably cost. And if they're willing to share assets, even more so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody else? Was there anything you wanted to see at the showcase that wasn't shown? No, I'm yeah. kind of with the same same page as everyone else. Uh, the, the thing that I was like kind of hoping we got was uh, Senua Saga, and we did. So Yeah, man. Yeah, um, I'm happy. Yeah, uh, J Ship goes. Should shouldn't we expect less bugs since Bethesda is only making games for one console? No, <laughs> it's Bethesda, bro. You're still gonna get bugs uh, yeah. again. The bugs are coming just because of the fact that how big and expansive these games are, and how many different systems. Like, think about it. Whenever you move like a fucking trash can or whatever, it has to keep track of that. You know, uh, it's a lot of things that as you notice, if you play these games, you notice that the games actually get buggier the more you keep playing it because there's just more shit that needs to be saved in the background, you know? So it's, you're still going to get bugs. You can't avoid that unless you get it on PC and the fans fix it for you, you know? I will I will say this. There's one person who uh, that isn't here that would, would have probably said this. Uh, I don't know. They didn't have gears. They didn't have they didn't gears. Have yeah, gears. Adam would have said that. They didn't have gears. I was waiting, waiting. No talk about waiting. the division. I did the roadie run to my PC to watch the stream. And once again, once again, <laughs> no Rockstar <laughs> table tennis. It's epic fail. Epic, epic fail. fail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, next question here for Mr. Logic Wins. Uh, <laughs> last year, Tony and Gene Park went viral for stating the starting the I'm leaving Game Pass movie. I didn't start that shit. Um, my question for <laughs> my question for Tony is: Did today's Xbox showcase do enough to rekindle your faith in Game Pass? Why or why not? Nope, I'm good. I'm buying my games one on you know one at a time, and that's it, man. Because again, I already know what's gonna happen. I'll get Game Pass, play one game, and then don't touch the shit 
for like years. You know why? And that's not theoretical. That's literally what happened. I think I was, I was there was one point where I paid for Game Pass for like two years straight. I didn't play a single fucking game because nothing interested me. So I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'll just buy my games, you know? So, nope, I'm good. I also think you own even the limited ownership that you get from buying digital games. Like, I, I, I think... I don't want to say you're a creature of habit, but I think you're somebody who likes the peace of mind being like, nah, it's, I got it. I don't need to subscribe to something to have it. I just have it. Yeah. And even that, like, is kind of dubious, too, because you don't really own digital. But I don't care about that anymore, you know? Yeah, but I think, like, just to throw it out there, I think if any of us could own a physical copy of a game that could never be taken away, you could go out and buy a fucking golden CD-ROM, and they're like, the whole game's here. They can never mm -hmm. fuck it up. I think all of us would go that option. Yeah. All right. Um, I can't own games. I'm just going to rent them on Game Pass, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, man. It's like digital blockbuster video, you know? Bro, I'm yeah. saving like, dude, if I, if I sat here and looked at the games that I can play on Game Pass and calculated the cost of them, like, not even from here out, like, I could probably buy an Xbox. No, you probably could. Yeah. Again, if you're the, if you're the type of person like you, Brett, you're definitely going to get a lot of Game Pass. But if you're a kind of person like me, you're not going to get as much out of it. You know, like I was yeah, I yeah. was giving Microsoft free money for years. You know, because I'm not I'm not an experimental guy. Like, oh, let me try, let me try. I'm like, nope, I like what I like. It's not there. I'm not playing any of this other stuff. You know. Well, here's the here's the other thing, man. Like, and I wonder if this is a statement on on maybe how they could have marketed it better. Like. The first couple of years, they didn't have much. I didn't jump in on the Game Pass bandwagon until more recently. And since I've joined, they, they have a fair amount of stuff that actually keeps me entertained. But like in the even when I jumped on in the very beginning, it was still a little shaky. So like I think we had vastly different experiences. And that may have colored our perceptions differently. Yeah. Uh, wait. You, you, okay, you jumped in like later on, right? Yeah, yeah, I jumped. I I got. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because I, I jumped. I jumped in from the jump. Yeah, yeah, I jumped in from like the beginning. Um, yeah, you had those early days where there was just nothing on there. But the man. thing is, even now, there's still nothing I care about. But where's the I big? Like, uh, where are the big AAA Xbox exclusives? Yeah, that's Red that's, Redfall. I, I'm not going to subscribe for yeah. that. You know. Again, I like how every every yeah. every single week when Tony mentions that he the reasons why he doesn't. Uh, subscribe to Game Pass. Brett always has the counter with why he does. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, we've got to balance this shit, right? <laughs> well, no, uh, yeah, but like, I keep in mind, I'm throwing out there, like, I'm not out here evangelizing Game Pass. I'm saying why it works specifically for me and how that may not translate to everybody else. If anything, I'm saying, like, yo, don't expect these results to necessarily be typical. Like, I've said it before, like, I had the Sega channel when I was younger. I was one of the very few people that had that luxury for the brief amount of time, and I spent most of my adult life wishing for that to come back. So this is, it, it's kind of my jam. Like, I just love the fucking option. It reduces a barrier of entry to me. Like, I'm not the typical case example, though. Like, Tony is on the other end of the spectrum, and I think together we do a pretty good job of, like, showcasing both points of view. Honestly, most people are going to land somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I still think Game Pass is good for most gamers, to be honest, you know? Um, I think it's, yeah, if you have an Xbox, you have no reason not to have a Game Pass, you know, especially because most gamers are like that. They play a game for a couple of hours and they move on to something else. Game Pass is perfect right. for that. It's the perfect, um, like, buffet table, you know? Right. Um, but I'm the motherfucker when I go into the restaurant, I want a specific meal, you know? Mm -hmm. And I and I usually get the same meal every fucking time, you know? I'm that, <laughs> I'm that dude, man. I go to a restaurant every fucking time I look at the menu. I always end up getting a burger with fries every single time. You know, only wants Applebee's. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. You know, and I also know burger and fries ain't gonna fuck with my stomach. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, right. like that shit is safe. safe. Yeah. yeah. Even yesterday, man, I went to this one spot, barbecue, uh, Dallas barbecue and shit, uh, uh in a, uh, by SVA Theater. Again, I'm like, I'm looking at the menu. I'm like, this shit looks good. Ended up getting a burger. Ended up getting a burger. You know, um, but it is what it is. Fries are all right. Yo, man, you gotta have some Dallas BBQ the right way. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, should I want? Should I want these wings? And they, I don't know. Something was suspect about. It, so I got the burger. I got yo. No. I got I got the double burger. That shit was too fucking big. You know. 
I, everything, I, wait, this yeah. from? everything over there is big. Yeah, like like if, I had to, like I literally had to like I, it was embarrassing, man. I had to fucking like like chop the burger up and shit and eat it in pieces. I'm like, I should have just got one pat one. Okay, I had a double patty. One fucking patty was like mad thick, and this was two of them. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I can't. My mouth doesn't open. I'm not an alien. You, I'm not a xenomorph. <laughs> you know, like a or snake, a hundred yeah. inch my jaw to eat. Or is this? Yo, yo, if you you'd be good. Like if yeah. you went to Dallas. BBQs and got the wings. The yeah. wings are are like normal yeah. chicken wings. They're not like nice. those little mini wings. With the fucking so. the pigeon wings and shit. No, <laughs> yeah, know? they're not those little things that you get. That you yeah. know, those little wings. No, they give you some real ass wings. Yeah, so you just get. By the way, I ate that whole fucking burger though. You know, um, mm. uh, Tony, do you prefer tall burgers or wide burgers? Burgers, man, just give me a fucking burger. <laughs> you know, I don't care as long as it's good. Um. All right. Moving on here. Jolly yellow nerd, my brother. You know. Um. Yeah. Okay. So his first question. Tony has commented that he not that he is not feeling like next generation gaming is here. It's coming. It ain't here yet. It's coming. You know. Um. Could that be a sign that perhaps next gen hardware is releasing too soon, or maybe there just has to be that full that lull period early in the console generation to allow game creators time to learn how to tap into the power of the consoles what i mean is that maybe consoles are releasing new hardware before game creators are able to truly tap into their power but at the same time you could say if console makers wait until they think game creators are ready to truly tap the power that would push things back even further but i think what's really going on is this, this game development takes so much longer now it's not really about learning the console the consoles are just pcs it, they're not learn. they don't have to relearn anything it's not like making a something for a cell processor or some crazy shit like that you know it's all based off of x86 architecture it's all the same shit it's really just the fact that these games take like three or four years five years sometimes to develop and that's why it's taking so long for the generation to come this is why we have so many of these filler games because and yes i realize you have to take the whole rona situation into account yes but even before that last generation it took three fucking years for things to get started because it takes yeah. a while for developers this is why sean layden was saying like yo we can't sustain this where every game takes five years you know um so that's why mm -hmm. you know so i don't think it's a matter of like these guys are really into it's just the games take a long fucking time you know so that's what's really yeah. going yeah. on yeah but whatever but whatever voodoo that insomniac seems to be fucking doing yeah. Yeah, Insomniac. You know, yeah, Insom yeah. Like by, by the way, Mighty Nerd, I'm speaking generally. You, you know, like yes, Insomniac is a outlier, but an outlier doesn't negate the reality of the situation. You know, right? I, by, I, by the way, not to go off topic, I really not you, Mighty Nerd, but I really hate when people do that. You're speaking about something in general terms, right? That applies to nine out of ten things. They go, oh, but this one thing negates it. Therefore, your entire argument is wrong. No. That's an outlier. There are always outliers, you know? And I'm, again, I'm not speaking about video games. I'm about in general. I hate when people do that shit. You see that all the time and fucking, oh, my, oh but, but, but my friend did this. Therefore, what you just said is wrong. Shut the fuck up. I'm talking about in general, you piece of shit. Anyway, go on. Um, well, that reminds me of like when they're like four out of five dentists recommend brushing. And you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, but that other dentist. Yeah. yeah, what about that, that, that dentist say you shouldn't brush? Their whole, your whole argument is wrong. Yeah, go have your your crusty ass teeth then. You know. Anyway, I don't even know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, one. Anymore. I mean, the thing about the thing, but thing about it is, it's like yes, it's there's there's so many there's so many factors that go into making a game, and like the thing about it is, is that yeah, a lot of these games taken five, you know, you know, four and five years, and in the demands of players have gotten higher and higher. You know, people want these you know games that essentially do everything that they would ever want them to do and hey. those those you know having having those sorts of things just you know i mean look how long it took the bethesda to make this game right it's more than five years no, right like, yeah. way longer than, what about cyberpunk that shit has been developed Not, for eight years you know that was yeah because yeah. the first three oh. years it wasn't actually in development well, yeah, it is still, true. Yeah, they didn't actually they still, start real development until 2016. So it was really, but it's still four years, though, you know, regardless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's still a lot. I, I actually have a contrary theory. Um, uh oh. Well, because, uh, look, like, the, the gulf between consoles and, and PCs has just widened, right? And they're not developing a whole lot of stuff 
for the super high end PCs because most of the market doesn't sit in that space. No, I Brett, you're wrong because they got Starfield and that one example negates everything you just said. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> so, like, I, I think that we have the ability to push out insane computing power. And if enough people sat in that space, I think that they would develop it. I think the problem is PC components have been super expensive to produce as well as just to sell, right? Like, it's the, the thing holding back the consoles is the price points. Mm -hmm. And in, until yeah, that super expensive architecture gets cheaper, we're going to be right here. Yeah, but I got to bring this up, Manny, because this is something you and I talked about a lot. Uh, Kishak goes, I think customer expectations have risen every generation and developers are finding it harder to keep up. Yep. Why do you think yep. you have every game being an open world online something or other? You okay, know? but hold up. Hold up. We are in a golden age of small people, small teams, sometimes even single people making amazingly uh, impressive games. Right, like the tools for talent, like so some truly exceptional people can make a lot of stuff with not that many people. So I don't know that it's necessarily that that bottleneck that we think of. I just I don't know. Like, and I, I'm not saying that like everybody's that amazing talent, but man, like the tools have to be getting easier too, right? Yeah, but we haven't, but we haven't seen the any of those games it? match any. Name me one game. Like developed by like a one or two dudes that matches something like God of War Ragnarok. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The thing about the thing about the thing about it is that whenever you're dealing with an indie, with in, in, dealing with the indie space, Kojima not included, um, you know you're gonna get a, your the scope is usually a smaller sort of scope, but the one difference between in the indie world and the um and the triple a space is that the indie guys are not trying to do everything they have one thing that they they have one or two things that they do good and they stick to doing that they're not making open worlds they're not making a massively multiplayer online game that with 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 with, with connective co-op with all these complicated systems their scope is usually to to the sizing of the of what they what they're doing they're making their, you know, you see a lot of these sorts of Metroidvania games. They're not, they're Metroidvania games. They're not anything else but those things. Same thing with all the other types of things in the indie space. Yeah, again, these, yeah, the, yeah, you do have games even, that are made by like even, one or two guys, but these guys, those games are not on the level of a big AAA, not even close. Go even, on, even Senua's I'm not, Sacrifice, I'm not thinking. which is, even Senua's Sacrifice, the scope. That's you know, a small uh, scope. As impressive yeah. as that game get, get game was, yes, the scope was small. It did. It did. What did it do? Uh, what did it do? It did only. It did only certain specific things. It had story. It had the bits of combat, which were not that not that much. Not a lot of you know, platforming and and the and these puzzle solving sections, but not a lot to that game. Yeah. Brett, what's up? So it's it's a, it's about keeping. So the key to keeping your uh, to keeping your to having more uh, high quality games out is to not is to, to to rein in your scope, not having every single thing that in the kitchen sink, and then that way you'll be able to get things out quicker. Yeah, which yeah, goes well, back to Sean Layton. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I wasn't saying like um, that. Uh, that they they that they compare. I'm just saying that like, now yeah, one person cannot do the job of a whole development team. But I've seen small teams do some pretty he heavy lifting, which leads me to believe that they're either working with some advanced tools, or and this is the only conclusion I can come to in the in the game industry. And I think this is a problem when you get too many creatives in one space, is that some people just don't pull their weight as much as either as as others. I mean, a lot of times in, in these instances, you see some a, a few people really pulling ahead and kind of separating themselves from the pack. And I, I think those guys are just the key players that are harder to get and maintain. And I don't think the game industry, I think it's run too much like a corporation and not, and it doesn't do a good job enough, enough of identifying key talent and kind of putting them in positions of power. I think it's just too corporate. 
and I think that's I an inherent know. issue with the game industry. I don't know so I don't know so much that it's it's having people in people in positions of power. You know, there are de definitely a lot of creative people that have positions of power, but they end up crashing and burning. Yeah, Again, that's true. I think I think the biggest thing it has to do with is scope of your game. You know, choosing choosing a line, sticking, you know, and trying to stick with that line, and not trying to 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 do so many other superfluous things. But again, the market doesn't understand that. People, you know, Joe Schmo sitting behind the thing of playing the game is just going to say, "Why isn't this game open world?" It's because it's not open world. <laughs> yeah, because you, you don't want an open world just for the sake of being open world, unless they do. Like, you don't want it there. If it's not doing a job or making things better, it's it's kind of like cheese, right? Like you may be compelled to just put cheese on everything, but it, do, contrary to popular belief, it doesn't always help. You can't just but bake a square block of cheese and put on more cheese and be like, there, it's better now. I feel like the <laughs> I feel like what happens with a lot of the a lot of the triple A space because a lot of them don't have don't have a, a tight scope. They essentially uh, cast a wide net to try to catch as many things as they can. Oh, it only does everything, yeah. which is a problem because nothing can do everything. Yeah. All right, um, Reggie Scrooge Castlevania, like Ducktales, like what was going on? No. Oh, so it was. I forgot the name of the game, but it was on the PC game show today, and. Um, it's a Metroidvania style game with Ebenezer Ebenezer Scrooge oh, and okay. that Scrooge. You, you use the ghost of um the Christmas past and future in the game with you. But it's the it might not be for everybody, but it's just the way I would never have thought to use those characters like that. It it I don't know. It, it just look it looked like something that could honestly be on the Switch, but they showed that the PC game show, but it, it looked freaking it looked freaking kick ass, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know why it just stood out to me. I, I gotta check that out. Um, Mighty yeah. Nerd asked us if we're gonna be streaming the Capcom 40th anniversary stream. Uh, no, because I'll be working, so sorry about that. Um, I didn't even know that was happening. That's cool because I saw people already talking about Capcom 40th anniversary. Shout out to Capcom, you know, um, them at Capcom and and Insomniac Games, I think, are the best game developers currently. You know, they're they're fucking yeah. legit. Street Fighter 6, man, yo, that game. Okay, remember, it, Reggie, you you listen to Throwdown, man. I know you saw, you heard me yeah. say I was done with yeah. fighting games, right? This yeah. shit not only did it bring me back to Street Fighter Six, but I'm going to be copying out Mortal Kombat just because of Street Fighter Six. I'm back, man. Let's fucking go, <laughs> you know. Um, Exo Primal, fuck that shit, you know. Um, moving on here. All right, last question of the night from Mister Jolly Yellow Nerd. Um, I know it would be speculation at best, but out of what we saw this week, are there any titles that you think could be Game of the Year contenders? Uh, like, we know most people are already talking about Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom, but what other games do you think will get Game of the Year chatter? Tears of the Kingdom is going to win fucking Game of the Year across the board. I guarantee yeah. you that. You know, yeah. I don't agree with that, uh, but that's the reality of the situation. You know? Bro, hold on. This might be the first year in a long time where each of the top console makers could bring their own contender for game of the year. Yeah. So Sony with yeah. Spider-Man, um, Xbox with Starfield and, you know, Nintendo Nintendo with Nintendo. Nintendo. yeah, yeah, you're right. That's, that's pretty dope. Actually. I didn't think about it like that. Um, but yeah, tears and games in a win. I guarantee, I guarantee you that across the board is going to win game of the year, you know? So Bro, I mean, if Starfield, yeah. if Starfield launches with, you know, intact and and working like i can see a lot of industry people especially being like look at this fucking thing and all the shit it does not this industry <laughs> how, how embedded they are mm -hmm. with nintendo no fucking way i guarantee you that you know nintendo has this shit in, in the bag man even even if those people like starfield more they're still going to give it to carries of the kingdom i guarantee you that shit you know uh, yeah, Brett. Yeah, you know I'm right. You know I'm right. You know I'm it's, right. Well, dude, but also yeah. Spider Man. Like it's, I did. I don't know, man. It, it's tough. It is tough. If you put nepotism aside, it is neck and neck. And I can't say that you definitely put nepotism aside, but like, oh, Spider Man is gonna walk away with some awards if you put nepotism away. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm not as entirely sure. Like. 
I, I definitely know that they're Nintendo fanboys. I also feel like there's a lot of uh, PlayStation fanboys who are going to be pushing for Spider-Man. So, yeah, but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about at the gaming publications. I guarantee you, it is going to be Tears of the Kingdom all the way. Yeah, they always try to shape the narrative. So you got and you know people they. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, they kind of fall. Yeah, and, and by the way, before people get think twisted, is not because people go, "Oh, you think Nintendo's paying nobody off?" Nintendo's not paying anybody off. The again, no. I I know these people. They genuinely love Nintendo. It makes them feel good. This game will win. I guarantee you that. Even if there are objectively better games, it doesn't matter. You know. Look at what happened when um, the first Horizon came out. Yeah. Um. But it says. Uh. It was asked me. So you saying Tears of the King doesn't deserve it? I can't fully say that because I haven't played it. But in my opinion, my opinion, fuck no, it doesn't deserve it. Dated ass game. Anyway, go on. Rich. I mean, most most of my concerns have been proven um, kind of <laughs> ill-conceived. Like, apparently, you know, it's it, it it doesn't feel like a reused world. It doesn't feel like a lot of the same assets. It feels fresh. The building system is really unique. Like, it brought what everybody liked and then brought a new feature that everybody fucking loves. Like, other than the fact that it looks like jank ass asshole, like, it's... It's Thank great, you. man. It it looks solid. Everybody fucking loves this game. I can't can't say anything uh, bad about it. How does yeah. nobody get past the uh, the weapon fragility still there? It's like you ignored yeah. the main complaint everybody had, and then they doubled down on it. I mean, the master sword fucking is gone, and I mean, even the the amiibo shit you get, which you could get the fierce deity sword out of an amiibo. <laughs> Krista tried it, and that shit breaks. So, it's like, I'm doing no, it. And I'm your not. crafting's break. Like, I, that's that's the thing. Like, I still can't get, but like, that bothers me so much. But apparently, people didn't shy away from it in the first game, and so they're just like, this is a thing now. I do have a question about that, though. Yeah. So, <laughs> would the weapon fragility be? I, I always wanted this really since playing the first game. Is that does that have something to do with the memory limitations inside of the actual switch? Right. No, I think it's a, no, it's no. a I think it's a deliberate design choice. And that's even worse if you think about it. That they purposely do this. You know they, well, they don't want you getting attached to weapons, but I'm just like, then just give me a bunch of the same. Like I'm just gonna be like, okay, well these are disposable. I'm just, I'll still throw them around like candy at a parade, but like let me keep one that never oh. breaks. Or just give you the ability to fix them. Yeah, I didn't even do that. that. Yeah, yeah, like 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 the Souls games. They give you the ability yeah. to fix the weapons. Yeah, They're to repair your weapons. Interesting. Yeah, uh, it kind of ruins yeah. the whole hunting for a cool weapon if it immediately breaks, and you're like, "Well, that was." I don't want to say fun, but something. Yeah, and the 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 memory issue is out the window because um, Monster Hunter Rise is running on there. They don't have a weapon fragility issue. You can yeah. have a ton of weapons in, in Monster Hunter. Yeah. Blitz says weapon fragility is not that big of an issue with fuse. You can make some mega strong weapons, but you'd have to play it. These guys are playing it and they're still complaining, you know? I mean, I'm not. And that's why I say, like, I, I preface with this, like, it seems like everybody seems happy with it. Yeah. It, no, that's again, the people, yeah. I'm not yeah. I'm playing sorry, it. Yeah. I'd, I'd try it if we were on Game Pass, but like, bro, I, I feel, I feel like, good enough for I, Game Pass, Brett. <laughs> yeah, but like, I feel like there's a but there's some inherent issues that I have that I'm not willing to make that seventy dollar gamble, right? Like, I don't want to spend that seventy dollars and be like, yeah, I still got beef. Wait for wait. Oh, for damn. Game okay. Pass. Oh, uh, Bliss is oh. questioning whether you guys are actually playing this game or not. Me. I kept. I've said multiple times. No, I'm not. Yeah, Chris isn't. Kristen playing yeah. it. Yeah, Kristen's playing it, and then I just hear her complaints or watch her play it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't have it yet. I probably pick it up uh, later on. But I was about to say, uh, um, good enough for Game Pass might be the new. Um, wait till next E3. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, like I said, man, you know, people are genuinely happy with the game, and that does make me feel good because, you know, 
amid all this bullshit that's going on in the world, it is good to see people happy. Not my kind of yeah. game, obviously. I didn't like the original one. I ain't going to like this one, but that game ain't for me. There are other Tony games coming. Final Fantasy is coming. Street Fighter 6 is already here. Spider-Man 2 is already Spider-Man 2. So yeah. I'm good. I don't need to be playing no Zelda. You people yeah, well, that's it. a good thing, man. It like, is a good thing. It's a very good thing, you know? The fact that games exist that we look at and we're like, nah, not 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 my jam. Yeah. Like that's mm-hmm. fantastic because that's other people's jam. And if they were my jam, it wouldn't be theirs. Right? Like we don't want yep. everything to be carpet gobbied. I like that games are starting to diversify again. Like we 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 amalgam too hard. We everything turned into Ubisoft. Please like let hey. let other things be other games. That's fine. Even if it like and this is coming from somebody like I grew up on, I learned to read on the first Zelda. Like, does it make me sad inside that they've developed and kept with a mechanic that I personally find game-breakingly irritating in the first game? Uh, yeah, that, I'm not super thrilled about that. I feel a little left behind, but hopefully it won't be a thing with Zelda forever. It's It just doesn't feel like my jam. Um, again, I could be wrong, but I don't, I'm not willing to gamble, gamble $70 after like i it bothered me on the first game. there's a lot i loved about the first game but that just i couldn't get over it man it bothered me the whole game and i don't want to do it again but same here man i i purposely avoided fights in that game so i wouldn't break my weapons that is not fun you know and as a matter of fact this is how badly it traumatized me the next game i played after that which is also a bad game was mass effect andromeda and i had to tell myself tony it's okay to shoot the enemies. You're not going to run out of bullets. You're good. Because I was still traumatized by the fucking Zelda where I couldn't, I was like, you can't touch the enemies. They're going to break your weapons. You know? Man, what a badly designed game that was. You know? Um, but not not for me, man. And then, of course, the, the ugly graphics. They were ugly back then. They're uglier now. You know, in comparison to shit we got. Um, not for me, man. Not for me. But like Brett, like you said, it's okay that it's not for me. There's other games that are for me. So we're good. You know? Um, all right, man, we're done. Just a good show, good show, good show. Reggie, I want to thank you for being on, you know, answering the fans' questions and giving your thoughts on Xbox and all that. Um, is there anything you want to say before we wrap up here? Um, no problem. I'm just uh, glad to be back on the show, it's been too long. And um, I was looking at the comments too, and I, at, um, you know, I pretty much like the community, and I like the crowd here, so it was awesome. Hell yeah, man. Throw down fans yeah. for life. <laughs> you know, um, you don't really do social too much. So I, like, I can't be like plugging you. Like, but I guess if people do want to follow you, like, you know. How, yeah, how, how, yeah. You're not going to really see me on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> just, I'm just in the DMs. <laughs> yeah, I only, I only speak to the DMs. That's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah. All right, Carlos, do we have anything to plug? Um, the I am Negan. If you guys are into The Walking Dead or The Walking Dead universe, we are reviewing Fear the Walking Dead, the final season, the nuke, as it's going on right now. Um, we should have a new episode uh, for for this week's uh, uh, Fear the Walking Dead episode uh, this upcoming week. I'm, we're still not sure on a date because uh, both Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. and Adam Vale are out of town, and uh, so we'll. So we'll we'll let you know uh, when when I get that. But uh, once it's there, we'll talk about it. Uh, it's almost at the end, but we covered The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead and everything that's within the Walking Dead universe. That's I am Negan. You can catch that on thecoalition.com. That's the Coalition with a K or the Coalition YouTube channel. Uh, make sure to check that out. Your logic wins, man. Showing up at the ass end of the show. Uh, we were talking about you earlier, man. Like, Yo, where's Logic wins at, man? Where's, where's the homie at? You know? Um, I think he was here the whole time. It's just he didn't, uh, yeah. he didn't notice anything. But yeah, Reggie, man. Logic wins. He, he's an old school man from the bit bag days, man. You know? Long, yeah, that, awesome, history. awesome. Yeah, you already know, yep. man. All right, people. We're done here. So make sure you follow Throwdown on Twitch and Twitter. Join our Discord where the conversations and the rumors are always popping. Got the best fans out there, man. You guys are fucking awesome. You know? Um, who, who, who else has an accountability section? Yeah, we. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> accountability <laughs> section. <laughs> you guys are wild. Man. It's like, no, we need us. We need, like we make too many bets on this shit, man. We need accountability on this <laughs> motherfucker. But now you guys are holding yourselves accountable just for things said. It's not even bets anymore. Did you say you didn't like sixty frames a second games? <laughs> 
Oh, man. All right. Um, anyway, you can find Throwdown on every podcast app by searching for Throwdown Show. That's two words, Throwdown Show. Throwdownshow.com to listen to past episodes. And if you've been watching us on YouTube and enjoyed our videos, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of when our premieres go live. Links to everything down below. Once again, I was your host, Tony Polanco. And tonight, I was joined by Emilio Lopez. See you next time. Chris Seely. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. Peace out. Brett Murdoch. It's for real. <laughs> and Mr. Reggie Butler. Take care. God bless and be safe. All right, people. You already know, man. Thursday. Later. Peace. Losers. Losers.